Good evening. Uh, I need a motion to open this work session. So moved. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight uh, is is the uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, okay. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight uh, is is the uh, right. We 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 got we got to fix the audio here. Give me a second, please. Aye. Aye. Uh, okay. Uh, the first item on the agenda tonight uh, is is the uh, right, we, we, we got we got to fix the audio. Three seconds, please. We have it. I think so. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda was uh, a little presentation from the Flood Mitigation Advisory Committee. Um, and then we have another uh, panelist who's going to be presenting, uh, Matt Camodi, our traffic consultant from AKRF. Uh, so the flood committee, welcome tonight. Uh, you know, if you could keep it to about 20, 25 minutes until so about 5.30, please. So who wants to start for the flood committee? Well, I was gonna start and then Peggy was gonna fill in the detail because I tend to be bullet points and short and sometimes I leave stuff out. So, okay, go ahead. okay. so good evening, um, mayor and board and uh, FMAC members. And uh, I don't know, is the public public on this thing or not? They're watching. They're watching and, and members of the public, members of our village. So thank you for inviting me and, and the FMAC here. Um, thank you for appointing me to the committee. Um, and I really wanna thank Peggy and the committee for all the work they've done. Peggy um, gave me a whole folder full of stuff, which I'm still reading through. Um, so thank you, Peggy, um, or not so much. Um, at any rate, um, and you know, thank you for allowing us to work with you on the flood control, because that is our job. So um, last time when I was on the committee and we did flood control, I had a couple of phrases that I repeated over and over again. And I think it helped us work together both as a yeah, yeah, committee. Yeah. Excuse me, Tony. I'm not trying to stop. I feel so I hear someone else's out. audio. It's not me. Does someone have their phone? Am I hearing like a replay of this? Yeah, yeah I don't know. Like that. So what happened? What the board like to do? Let's let all you fix this. What happened? Thank you. Uh, trying to figure it out. If you're not talking, give your mic. Give your mic. Okay. Okay. So, what I started to say was the last time we worked on this Army Corps project, the village was very divisive. And I think we were able to work well together as both a committee, the committee and the village, and then the, us with all of the villagers. And I had a couple of phrases that. I, I, I st say, said and that I believe were important then, I think they're important now. Um, okay, um, so the, the three things that I said previously again and again was besides working together, was that we needed a, a plan that worked effectively at flood control. We needed something that was aesthetically appropriate for the village and environmentally acceptable. And I think that we, we achieved that and we went down to Washington and got it approved. Unfortunately, we didn't get the money. I think Ida has shown us one additional thing, and this has been in the, you know, the news now for years, global warming, climate change, more and more flooding. But from what I've understood about Ida, the amount of rain and water that came down the Mamaroneck was worse than it ever was, right? And so my new point, I guess, is I'd like to, us, in addition to looking at the Army Corps project, take this as an opportunity to maybe do holistic watershed flood management, right? And there were things that the Army Corps wouldn't pay for before. I'm thinking maybe we can get some additional monies from the Biden infrastructure plan, and I'm not sure where else. But, you know, we've had things like the, the Mamaronic Dam and Reservoir has a lot of deferred maintenance. So I'd like to look at this all holistically. So that's kind of the overview. As far as the asks for tonight, Peggy had probably 
three pages and I tried to boil it down into five, which I circulated this morning. So I'm gonna basically list the five and then Peggy is gonna go into a little more detail. So we, I know there was a, the memo to the Army Corps and I appreciate that you know it got, it got answered and read and answered and I have to dig into that a little bit more. But I think a meeting in the next 30 to 45 days with the flood committee and the village and the Army Corps would really be good to get some of the things cleared up. Because if I remember correctly from the last time, as they start design, there was a lot of angst among the villagers about where that quote, the center line of the project was gonna be. And that's just an example. So I think in a meeting with the Army Corps would be important. The second is preparedness, right? And I know the village does a lot of work on preparing for these storms. And I think that the flood committee has also done some good things and gotten some things in place with the village that we had talked about years ago, you know, like the go bags and stuff like that. So I think maybe if we could work, continue working on that and maybe come a, up with a list of, you know, maybe standard operating procedures of what we do and when we do it, I think that would be great. Um, another thing that the FMSC members, uh, would like, and I basically sent out an email to everyone this week, well, last week, it was Saturday, asking our members to see if we could get consensus. So these five points that I'm putting up, we, I have consensus or we have consensus from the committee. So the third one is when there are applications for construction and renovation in the floodplain, the, the FMAC would like to be CC'd. Now we can speak further about whether we should have any action on those or ability to act or whatever, but I think we should at least look at them, okay? The fourth one is, again, I know the FMAC has talked about this with, with the trustees and the mayor, but maybe there are some list of floodplain regulations that we could change, improve, uh, augment, and so we'd like to work on that with you. And last but not least, I know there's been lots of discussions from what I've read in these, these, these uh, emails from Peggy about the floodplain manager, a floodplain manager, and the role of a floodplain manager in conjunction with the FME, AC. So I'd like to say that, you know, we, I think we need to focus a bit on that and see how we can use that to our benefit. So those are the asks. And, uh, you know, at the moment, that's kind of where my head's at. So Peggy, would you please, um, you know, kind of go into each one a little bit and you know a lot more about this than I do at the moment because you've been on the committee as chair. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Tony. Thank you, Mayor and Board. Um, residents who are watching, businesses who are watching, glad that you're, you're joining us. I'm just gonna go into a little more detail. The first point was that the committee had sent a letter to the Army Corps of points that we wanted to discuss with them. We certainly want to do this in conjunction with the village. And um, what we'd like to suggest, we know that there is a, a meeting on the 15th of January to green light the project. And once that's been done, the court has told us, um, they actually commented that our questions were quote, excellent. Uh, we'd like to try and get something on the books ASAP. We all know the design process is starting once that is greenlit. And we'd like to get as much input on the early end with the core as possible. Clearly it's a meeting we know the village will set up um, and we'll, as many people can intend is fantastic, but the core, we would like as FMAC to have a meeting with everyone at the table. We also do think at some point after that, it would be wise to have a village wide meeting so that all the residents, under, residents excuse me, and businesses understand um, where we stand, what the process is, uh, how tweaks may be able to be done. And that's going to be a long process. It's going to go over a year, but people understand how that process will work. So that's kind of the number one question. Number two quest, uh, point was uh, storm preparedness. We wanna just make sure that all of the procedures that have been put in place over the years are actually still being followed. Um, the regularly scheduled use of the VAC truck, the cleaning of the um, green, yellow, and red zones, reds being the more flood prone areas to be, um, to be done more often. And also in years past, those red zones were done prior to a potential major storm. 
Unfortunately, we don't think that happened before Ida and we're hoping that that becomes just regular um, practice that maybe we can help a little bit. Um, we know that the Larchmont Reservoir is coordinated to be lowered. That always happens. We applaud that. Um, Regular debris we are hoping can be put on the um, DPW schedule, regular debris cleaning. When you go drive past or walk past the river, there are tires, there are, there's all kinds of junk, beds everywhere throughout the river. We really need to try and get on, we propose a regular rotation of getting that cleaned. Um, reverse 911 calls that are clear, uh, we, we can elaborate on that. Our memo of September, cited a number of points that we'd like to at least have a look at with you. And the regular removal of silt mountains, uh, we pointed out in September, the Grove Street underpass. I've never actually seen it as bad it is, as it is right now. Two of the courses are blocked. Um, I know that that's not a fantastic way of handling it, but until the core project happens, we think we want to suggest that the village take another look at doing this because these, these are choke points and um, they're a little scary. Third thing, as Tony had said, we'd like to suggest adding a step in the process. We understand we're only an advisory board and not um, a land use board, but we'd like to be involved when projects are being proposed for either residential or um, commercial development in a flood zone that the building department include us, send us the proposed projects so that we can also review them and at least opine quickly to the planning board if we have any concerns. Number four, um, we had suggested future legislation. Kelly was very um, helpful in putting this together with us uh, probably about two years ago with different points that we were hoping could be um, looked at by the board and the legal group to be added to our code. Um, one of which was all future new construction in a flood zone be built to a minimum of two feet over the BFE after Ida. Um, we may wanna look at, at that and even make it stronger. My house is six feet over the BFE and we know that that doesn't necessarily mean much these days. Um, and the second, all future new construction in a flood zone could be built with pervious paving surfaces as opposed to impervious paving surfaces. Um, there was um, there were a number of questions sent to our committee after Ida about who the floodplain administrator is. Um, people have suggested that needs to be a village um, staff member. We don't know the legality of that, but we're just questioning that. If you can just let us know. And the last is um, we did put a, a number of memos together: September, October, and December. We understand that the village staff has been very stressed, but we would like to ask for responses to all of those points because we put them together as a committee. We felt they were valid and we're hoping that at some point in time they could be answered. So thank you for your time and thank you for meeting with us. I tried to keep it as quick as I could. You actually did a very good job. Yes, very good. <laughs> thank you, Peggy. Um, the, the part about involved when there are applications in the floodplain, uh, perhaps we can have the planning department uh, just put like a tickler to make sure that whenever uh, something is built in the floodplain, you guys, uh, it pops up on, on their computer that you guys get uh, sent the application. And, and to, you know, and as you, you correctly pointed out, it's just uh, advisory, but you could, you could put your two cents in and uh, it will be considered, I'm sure, by the land use board that is looking at it. So we really have three land use boards. You know, then we have the HCZMC, the uh, planning board, and the board of uh, uh, zoning uh, board. So I, I think that that is an easily fixed one. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I, I just emailed uh, Megan to see when we can meet with the uh, Army Corps. Uh, so when I get a, an email back from her, I will let you all know. Uh, Thank you. You're welcome. And the rest of it, you know, we will, we, we're, we're working on it. As you can see, you know, uh, there's been a lot going on. Uh, it has been a difficult uh, couple of years and uh, we will uh, keep 
plugging along and we thank you all for everything you have done and will do and are doing. Uh, you know, we, we need you to uh, you know, fill in the gaps uh, where the board of trustees, you know, doesn't, uh, you know, have uh, the bandwidth. So we, we're hoping that you, uh, you know, we really need to help our residents with preparedness too, because uh, I think that we're going to see more and more of this in the future, unfortunately. So, you know, uh, what, what is it? An, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. But thank you all very much for your cogent presentation and your recent memos. Well, thank you, Mayor and Board and, and Peggy and the rest of the team. Um, and we, you know, honestly, I'm, I'm excited. I'm thinking that uh, we're going to have the best flood control plan in the U.S., if not the world. How about that? I like it. I like it, Tony. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you to all the new members and the old members who have uh, served uh, well in the community. I appreciate it. Mayor, Mayor. Yes. In, in order to move with, with those very powerful words that, that Tony and, and Peggy and, and you have now lifted, I, I think we need to dis discuss next steps and, for example, what for what board can do what we'll do and what, for example, some things are staff so that or we can instruct staff to, to move forward with that. So next steps are key. Uh, on my end, I'll keep it very brief. Uh, I think the, again, the, the moment is, is with us now as it was at that time when we, you know, some members uh, of the flood mitigation went to New York before they went to Washington. Things were possible. Sometimes a little difficult some to me, but everything came out. And, and we, we could we, we definitely need to get on that same boat. So I, I support the overhaul view uh, of working together and working under that um, you know, uh, prior example of how things can work. Uh, and but also key is to really have have a, also a next step. If we're going to follow and when do you want to follow again in a month? And in the meantime, have some of these responses. Some 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 our staff on 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 are they. Will they do some of that flood preparedness, um, flood manage, flood plane manager? There are some things that we, we don't, we, I also would like to know, uh, and I would appreciate that. So, so a follow-up is key, at least on my end. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor, right. Mayor, Mayor, if I can, it's Andrew Spatz, former chair of flood mitigation, and, and I'm so pleased that Tony's back. And Tony and I were down in Washington in 2017 in conjunction with Peggy's effort. And I think uh, Kelly's past uh, participation and assistance with flood mitigation, she was very, very valuable and very helpful. Um, I, just if I can, Mayor, there's certain items that I describe as low hanging fruits, things that we can start today and tomorrow. And much like Tony and Peggy indicated, others that are more macro and holistic and will take a collective effort like the consideration of um, flood mitigation working in conjunction to um, planning board. But some of these items, which I think that Peg and, and Tony um, discuss are, are low hanging and, and can absolutely be um, implemented with a, uh, you know, as early as tomorrow. So I'm hoping, and we are hoping as a committee and as a village, there are a lot of people online this evening, uh, business owners, property owners and residents alike, um, that would be pleased and, and very fortunate to hear that some of these concepts can be implemented, um, especially with the storm management uh, in advance, whether it's 72 hours out, 48 hours to 24. You and I have had many conversations in the past, and uh, I know that you, you support that. And, and again, I can only say this from a previous chair of flood mitigation and property owner and resident here that uh, every, like you said, every little bit helps. And we really appreciate that. Thank really. you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank you, Flood Committee. Uh, the next up is somebody that we're paying by the hour. So we want to get him. Uh, we want to. Uh, excuse me. Uh, while we're still here with the Flood Committee, uh, uh, committee and following up on uh, what everybody has said, I think it's important uh, that there are lots of things in the five page memo that are ministerial that can be done as uh, Andrew would say, low, low hanging fruit. 
I think what we need to do is try and establish a timetable to try and do this. For instance, in terms of the referral to, you know, to the land use boards, I think that's something we can implement immediately unless anybody in the board feels differently. Um, in terms of the others, I think that, you know, maybe we can uh, start to go through those things uh, with staff um, uh, so that uh, the committee is going to meet next on the 28th um, of December. Uh, maybe we can uh, have the committee outline or, or pick the things that we probably can uh, promote very quickly with staff and try and get that done for the meeting in January, answers for that, um, unless anybody has problems with any of that. I think that's right. a good idea, Dan. All right. Thank you. Uh, the next up, we're going to have Matt Carmody. Okay, so I'm going to sign off. Uh... Yeah. Mayor and board, thank you very much. Have a good evening. I see Nora has a hand up. Nora, I'm not the chair of this meeting, so I can't let you speak, but. I, I think Dave Finch had his hand up. Am I right? I, I, I didn't hear you, Nora. I think Dave Finch had his hand up. Yeah, actually I did, Nora, and thank you for seeing that. I just wanna mention one little thing. Um, I think we've got to be very conscious of making as many people in the village aware that we are doing something. And the sooner the better, not just those who are on this call, but whether it's through the uh, village newsletter, um, of course, having a public meeting with the core as soon as possible. But I would imagine that there are a number of people, a goodly number of people who have been terribly damaged by Ida who are thinking day to day What's the village doing? What's the village doing? And I think we shouldn't keep it under our, our, our hat that we are doing something and try to emphasize that. Anyone else? Okay, thank you, Flood Committee. Have a good evening. Thank, thank you, you. Mayor. Thank you, Board. Thank you, FMIC. Okay. Happy holiday, all. Likewise. Mr. Carmody, welcome. Thank you, Mayor Murphy. Thank you, Board Trustee members. Mr. Um, Kermode is our traffic consultant from AKRF, and he's here tonight to talk about a few items that uh, the village has asked him to look at. Yeah, I, I was asked to uh, talk about uh, if there are any questions on the uh, Waverly Avenue uh, traffic signal feasibility proposal that AKRF submitted. Um, are there any questions about that? Um, I can also update on the various deadlines for some other tasks we've been asked to conduct. Okay, let, let's just start with your first one. Does anybody have any questions about the Waverly Avenue signal? And just refresh your map. This is Waverly and Fenimore? Waverly and Mamaronek. Waverly and Mamaronek, okay. And, okay, my, my bad. Uh, anybody have any questions? I, I think for many people who are Thank watching, you. They may not understand what it is that is being discussed. So maybe you can give a couple minute explanation of the different things that are being proposed. Uh, so people have a better eye can follow what is actually okay. discussed. Go ahead. Yeah, happy to do that. So um, I'm Matt Carmody. I'm from ACARF. We've been the village of Amerinex Transportation Engineer since 2018. Uh, we were asked to look at the feasibility of retiming or changing the traffic signal phasing at the uh, Van Ranst and uh, Waverly Avenue intersections on Mamaroneck Avenue to achieve either an all pedestrian phase, so all of the vehicular phases coming into Mamaroneck Avenue and on Mamaroneck Avenue would be red so that the pedestrians could cross uh, at the same time. Uh, or an idea of a Acaros is to look at something called a lead pedestrian interval where you'd be able to cross Mamaroneck Avenue during an all red phase for uh, seven to 10 seconds. Um, and then the Waverly Avenue and Van Rance um, movements would happen. So we provided a proposal to analyze that and uh, have not been asked to conduct it, but I'm available to answer any questions uh, about our proposal to look at um, those options. 
in terms of what you've already looked at there, uh, I guess my question is why were these not previously considered or? Yeah, so what happens now is you're able to cross Mamaroneck Avenue at Waverly um, concurrent with the Waverly Avenue vehicular movement. And you know that that achieves that pedestrian movement. And uh, I can't answer why um, a lead pedestrian interval hasn't been implemented. It's it's the village's um, signal to time and phase as they see fit. Um, so you know I can't answer why that hasn't been done previously. Mm -hmm. So the the intersect one of the big concerns that have been raised by a lot of residents uh, in that area is right now uh, it is red from one direction and green from another, but there you have two roads that are making turns either a left or right, depending on which direction they're coming from, either Waverly or Van Rance. Um, and uh, there's a lot of traffic seems to be on both and it becomes very dangerous for a pedestrian to cross because cars are not yielding. Uh, and even when they do yield, there is concern that many times as they come around, they don't see them until they're almost upon them. Uh, so the question, you know, the, one of the questions that has been raised by a lot of residents was to go to a full, uh, I call it a full stop, uh, you know, four red lights, if you will, um, which we have done at other significant inter intersections that have less pedestrian traffic, uh, such as Boston Post Road and Barry Avenue uh, is one, you know, one example that is a, you know, full, what I call the full stop uh, type thing. Uh, but we have other, we have other areas within the village that we have done that, which are, you know, major, you know, crossing areas. And um, so that is, that is something that is very much of concern by a lot of residents that keep raising that question, uh, including at the, um, uh, a neighborhood forum uh, that was, uh, uh, held just a couple of weeks ago, which uh, I know that uh, um, Tom and uh, Nora were at, uh, as well as myself. Um, so this is a this this is of a big concern uh, to provide a safe manner of crossing where they don't you know where things aren't of concern or aren't as aren't the concern that is now of you know of pedestrian safety. Yeah, I I think the. Uh, if we were to conduct the study that we've proposed, um, we would find a solution so that the pedestrian movement is not in conflict with those turning vehicles. Uh, if an all stop um, phase isn't feasible uh, because this traffic signal is very closely spaced with the Hoyt Avenue and the Halstead Avenue on Mount Pleasant intersection, if that option isn't feasible because of the closeness uh, and spacing of that and how it has to be coordinated with it, I'm confident that we can uh, recommend a, a lead pedestrian interval, which, as I explained, would allow pedestrians to cross with no conflicts for seven to 10 seconds so that they can get ahead of those conflicts. And it's been shown um, at, at uh, other intersections. Um, it's mainly the kind of thing you see in, in uh, larger cities like White Plains or New York City, um, where you have a lot of pedestrians who need to get out in front of those turning vehicles to be successful at um, not causing excessive vehicular delays, which is a concern there, but also to let pedestrians get out ahead of that turning traffic before it can get into the crosswalk. So the, those are the, the two um, uh, uh, phasing uh, types that we'll be looking at in the study. And, and you know, once we are in the study, we'll look if, if there are other options to explore. Uh, I see Tom had a question. I think, I, I think, I think that you're, you're, you're going down the right path. Are you going to look at it scientifically and figure out what's the best option for what we have there? Yeah, that's right. Okay, that's fine with me. I hope that's fine with everybody else. I, I, th I think that's great. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, I hope the emphasis is more on pedestrian safety than traffic backup. Yes. <laughs> and, and, and I'm in a car more, more, more than I'm walking, but I, 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 I walk that area a lot and I cross that area and it's, yeah. it's yeah. dangerous. 
no, it, it's, that's, it's why a, he, that's why he was hired. Yeah, yeah. It's a, after my name are, are two sets of um, initials. One is professional engineer and the other is road safety professional. Um, you know, it's top of mind for me and pedestrian safety is my specialty. So believe me, we're, we're going to try to achieve uh, uh, that goal of pedestrian safety above all else um, in this study. I see uh, Trustee Lucas has a question. So I just thank you for thank thank you for this information. I think we've been wanting to hear just what you said for a long time. Um, so do we have a sense of how long it will take to you know do the study, what the timing of it might be, whether once the study is done, we you know try the seven second um, like once yeah, leave pedestrian. Yeah, second while we're waiting to see what the study says. So unfortunately, the, the window has kind of closed on the year for um, acceptable data collection uh, because the holiday season has begun. Um, so, you know, I, I wish that we could have um, gotten approval to start this uh, in the fall when people were, you know, walking around a lot more and before you had the aberrations of um, holiday traffic. So, you know, the starting point would need to be um, you know, early next year, once things have normalized after the sort of the winter, this traffic spikes in the post Thanksgiving period, and then it, it dips after um, Christmas and um, New Year's. So, so when, is the optim when is the optimum time? So, you know, really in order to characterize the pedestrian activity and the um, average seasonal vehicular activity, you know, to make it, um, um, uh, a solid study that's going to be defendable um, because you know we we don't want to collect data at a time when traffic is high or low and then provide the wrong results and then your average driver you know on the avenue sees that um, you know we've timed the signal in a way that uh, causing lots of backups and and you get lots of complaints um, so that that ideal time uh, average months are usually once it starts to warm up in the spring um, so that you get the the uh, accurate counts of pedestrian activity and vehicular activity. So, so you know, April, maybe, April, May, would you say April, May? Yeah, April, May. Yeah, it do, doesn't need to wait until like later in May, it could be April. Okay, Victor, you want to say something? Yes, please. Uh, thank you, Matt, for looking into this sensitive issue. Look, do we have, and I probably know your answer, but I still have to push it. We have, we have some older studies that was done with the moratorium and with others. And, and I'm sure you're gonna tell me you need new things, but I'm gonna to try to tell you there's probably old stuff and it's probably the same old problem. It, it, it would be, and, and um, Can you know, in our quicker, proposal- Can it be quicker, Yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. Um, so in the moratorium, um, Study those were accounts that were conducted, and, and we do cite that in our proposal that we would use those. Um, after about three years, um, traffic data it, it becomes uh, stale. I know that the problem has persisted, but in order to do, you know, a rigorous study under the kind of uh, guidance of uh, traffic engineers uh, that you know we would have to defend this to potentially um, from the county department of um, public works, um, but also just to, to defend our, um, our results as feasible. Uh, you know, it can't be stale data. Um, we, we do recognize that um, throughout the pandemic, there have been ebbs and flows in traffic. So one thing that we have proposed is for our uh, data analytics partner who we've used throughout the pandemic to look at historic data to um, use their information so that it, when we do counts, we can, uh, what I call normalize it against that historic data. So um, it, definitely not ideal to conduct those counts now. Um, and, and I hear you, we, we may end up waiting and then just finding the same old data that's been collected uh, but I, you know, I'm I'm willing if everybody's comfortable that this is not going to be done to typical standards to do something different. It's just not my recommendation to not do new counts um, uh, so that we have the the most recent data uh, that can be defended. 
Yeah, because there, there have been buildings that have opened in the interim of that too. And businesses that have opened. And if you don't start this until spring, April, May, whatever it is, um, that then means that we're not going to have a decision, you know, till the summer. Um, and we're having the, the, the avenue is going to be repaved next year. Uh, we don't have a date, you know, it gets moved back, but let's assume that it gets moved up. Then, then we have a problem. And I'm concerned about just waiting. We have the TOD study. I mean, we, it's not as if this, this area has not been studied, uh, you know, in depth several times. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, it's not just one, you know, it wasn't just one time. So let me ask it a different way. Based on the studies that have been done, which I assume you have. Well, let's start with that. Do you have the studies that have been done? Yeah, we, we have the, the historic traffic volumes in hand. Um, and and uh, so, you know, we're, we're comfortable um, giving caveats. This is based on older data. As I said, this is under the control of the village of Mamaroneck. So if um, you are comfortable implementing our recommendations based on that older data, then you're within your limits to do that. Um, that's in your jurisdiction and, and, and that's acceptable. When you say you have traffic data, do you also have pedestrian data? That we will have to look into. That is a good point. Um, that's another reason why we had proposed to collect our own data because then, you know, we have quality control over what is collected, when it's collected, it be classified by, you know, bicyclist, vehicle, vehicle type, pedestrian. So, you know, that, that's in our proposal um, to collect that yeah. data the way that we like it to be yeah. presented to us. So I, I don't know that, that would, the, the research data, was part of our proposal. I don't know what, what's out the, there. The data that was collected uh, for uh, TOD and stuff like that was only traffic data. I don't think it was pedestrian data. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't I know, I don't have it. I don't have it in front of me. That's why I'm asking that, the question. That's usually what happens. I, I, I would rather get the fresh data because there's been a lot of businesses opening up there and you know that whole uh, bricks more thing has opened since then. Yeah, and I think the study that was done by uh, Provident in 2015 or 2016 just had uh, the traffic data. I don't think it had any information on pedestrian or alternative uh, transportation uh, numbers. Gloria, you nor, a, Nora has her hand up. Yeah, I just called it a day. Thank you. It seems like a long, you know, a long, a long time to wait. And I have an idea and I'm going to. Can he, Nora? I, I think maybe the answer, maybe the answer to my question is, is, is no. But is there any way that um, in the interim we could um, implement the seven second delay while, because we can't collect data till April or May? Or would and then remove it to collect the data, or would that create a false sense of security amongst regular pedestrians? Well, let, let me explain how it would work. Um, so it could be done now by taking that seven seconds of green time away from the Waverly Avenue approach. So that could be done as a pilot. And, you know, you could monitor how much longer the queue of cars spills back from Amerinick Avenue down Waverly. Um, you know, you could, another metric would be the number of complaints you get. Um, that can be done without our study. And you could be, you could do that as a temporary pilot, you know, try it out for a few weeks or something. So that, that would be the recommendation that we give backed up by all the data and counts and everything. There's no reason, um, you know, other than not knowing what the effects are going to be, um, that the village can't try it. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, oh, trustee. Okay. Mr. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks, man. It's good to see you. Thank um, you, Kelly. Nice see you see. Um, with with Shannon and on our walks. Me too. Um, you know, I was I was just going to suggest and, and just remind everyone this is a county project on on Mamaroneck Avenue, and you know we have 
real safety partners in Catherine Parker and George Latimer. And I think if we were to tell them, you know, we've got Matt working on this issue, we had a death there, a pedestrian fatality, um, I, I think they would work very cooperatively with us in you know, molding their time frame and their project to accommodate, you know, whatever we're trying to do there, if they know, you know, we are diligently working on this. So I just, you know, think if we keep communication open, this isn't like a, a loggerhead situation that, that we can't work through. Just, just to remind everybody, the county has said that they want to do it during the summer uh, when school is out. That's their time frame to, to do the paving. So if we do an April traffic study, uh, it might mesh in well and then have the county do their paving uh, starting in July and August. Because the county said that they're not going to start it until after school is out of session. Right. So how does that, how does that work for you time-wise, Matt? Oh, we'll be done before then. You know, we're, we'll be front-loading our project so that we can dump in the data that we collect in April. Um, so we'll have set up a, a lot of the analysis uh, already so that we can be done, you know, by Memorial Day easily. If if the, we wanted to implement, as you say, just try something and see what happens, would we have to tear anything up? I don't think so. It, the only tricky part would be, is the signal controller um, yeah. modern enough to be able to handle that additional phase that you're giving it, and that we would have to, we would have to investigate that. We, as I said, you know, we we haven't looked at anything. We've provided the proposal. That would be part of it. Is can it be implemented with the signal controller that you have out there? Uh, I, I I don't. I want to work expeditiously too, but, but I, I just don't want to do something for the sake of doing something without knowing that it's gonna. What, what unintended consequences it's going to have. And, and I, I'm just, you know, it, I'd rather just wait and get it done right. Uh, Tom, I understand that. And I'm not sure that I disagree with you, but I also am concerned that if we wait to the spring and do it and, uh, and it requires ripping something up and then you have to have a contract and then you know by the time everything's done we may not be able to we may be compromising what the county is going to do even with they're willing to work with us that's what i'm concerned about i don't see how that happens i don't i don't understand how that concern would materialize um, I, and what, what akrf can do is as soon as we're released to begin work on this the very first thing we'll do is look at the controller and make sure that what we're investigating are feasible options in terms of the mechanics of the signal, because we, we don't want to recommend something, you know, like Dan is saying that you have to tear up. Why don't, why don't we have that done first and then you, you report back to us where we are with that? Yeah, that, that can be done very quickly. Okay. We know people are frustrated with, with that crossing. So we know that you know, we have enough anecdotal information that the pedestrians see this as a problem. So maybe it, maybe if it's a simple pilot, we can try it. And if it's too complicated, obviously we're not going to start tearing up the road or putting in a new signal in the, for the short term. But if it's a quick, if it's something we can do computer wise, it might be, it but, might provide even more information. But I, but I also want to make sure that it, it doesn't uh, create unintended consequences and safety hazards that we're not foreseeing. So I'd like to, uh, him to look at that if we're gonna do that too. I mean, this is just our recommendation for ourselves, right? But so, so let's just make sure that there's, you know, some engineering and science behind it. Other than it sounds good to us. Uh, but let's go to the next item. So you'll look at that, begin to look at that and get back to us. Absolutely, sure. Uh, what's the next one, Mount Pleasant? No. Well, I'm I'm yeah. Mount Pleasant, yeah, why don't you do that one? Uh, sure, so that is a crossing that is now uh, yeah. controlled, yeah, 
is awful. Uh, it's controlled um, by a crossing guard during school hours. Uh, it's at the mouth of the Mount Pleasant intersection of Amerinick Avenue and Halstead Avenue. Uh, we have worked with the county DPW traffic engineer on a geometry for that intersection that would allow it to become a marked striped crosswalk like the other legs of that intersection. So uh, right now it doesn't have any um, pedestrian signal heads, you know, the walk don't walk signals, even though it's part of that signal. Um, you know, I don't know the, the whole story on why that leg doesn't have those or anything, but um, in order to do that, uh, because it's a county road, uh, the, the county uh, had to be convinced that it could safely be marked and um, that the pedestrian signal heads could be implemented. So we are at a place with the county where we have a geometric configuration uh, they're happy with, um, and now it needs to become a funded project. So the benefits to the village for that project, aside from the obvious pedestrian safety benefits, would be that um, uh, in the um, the sort of triangle that comes down from the uh, Smashburger building there, um, that would be widened into the intersection a good bit. So there would be a lot of sidewalk space that would be gained there that could be you know programmed by the village or become you know additional usable space, maybe. Uh, as a, a gateway, you know, to the downtown. So that's a benefit. Um, the intersection would be tightened up a bit and um, for, you know, vehicles. And um, then there would be uh, one single crosswalk that would would be uh, striped from that, um, that triangle uh, down the sidewalk under the uh, Metro North Bridge. So it'd be one single crossing instead of what you do now is cross in two different legs. The, the good part is that it does not require retiming or rephasing the traffic signal. So that was a big benefit of the agreement with the county traffic engineer. Uh, so it, it's, uh, it's not a small project in terms of its uh, capital cost because it involves, you know, um, demolishing old curbs, putting in new curbs. Um, and, um, but the good part is that motorists and, and pedestrians are going to see either no change or a safety benefit for that um, new marked crosswalk. Okay. Anybody have any questions about this one? Matt, uh, do you have uh, pedestrian uh, data for that? Uh, no, it, it wasn't a requirement because um, it doesn't involve a retiming in, of the intersection. So the, the county didn't require it. We, we did uh, look at historic data. I, I went there myself and did observations. I talked to the crossing guard, um, but that, that doesn't involve any change to the intersection that would require data collection. Well, well, one thing I think. Sorry, go ahead, Dan. I was going to say, uh, Matt, when we first discussed this, uh, you had you put together two conceptual projects: one that had hard scaping and one that had soft scaping. Things like you know, temporary bollers or temporary uh, delineators, uh, or, or the plastic delineators. But the county has said that if we're going to move forward. It's got to be the hard scaping. Yeah, th thanks for making that um, point, is that uh, because it will involve uh, a different turning radius for um, vehicles coming onto Mount Pleasant, it's a very gentle turn that they can make at a very high speed, which is not safe for pedestrians now. In order to tighten up that intersection and slow down that, that dangerous sort of blind right turn across the future marked crosswalk, um, the county said, you've got to put, you know, actual curbs there. You can't put like these flexible knockdown um, bollards that you see. So the temporary solution uh, is not acceptable to them. Uh, you know, when, when you get, come onto the railroad bridge, you can make a right, a, a sharp right, right past uh, the, the bus stop 
Ja. Yeah. yeah, it's called depot place on a map, but it, it might be called Hoy also. Right, but, but it joins Hoy. Right? Okay, yeah. No, no, I'm sorry, not Hoy, Bishop. It joins Bishop. Yes, it, yeah. It runs into Bishop. Yeah. I mean, that won't I, change. I understand that, but my question is would it help if that was kind of cut off, if people couldn't use that as a thoroughfare? Uh, yeah, uh, of course. Uh, it would reduce the number of conflict points between vehicles and pedestrians. It, it wouldn't um, allow the project to move forward much differently. It would just be safer because you would be right. reducing the number of places traffic can cross pedestrian paths. And just make just make where depot places just a driveway for those businesses. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, if, if they can get access from Bishop the back way, then that could be cut off. That could be closed off completely. But you know that might require some study, um, yeah, you, you or, or just coordination with people that use it. Yeah, okay. you have TCD over there, who often accept. Uh, uh, the uh, the vehicle drop offs, because you know, they're they're the ones that do all the uh, the trucks, the police cars. So they have the eighteen wheelers that are need to access their site. So that, that that's a be an interesting way to accommodate that. Okay, all right, just an idea. Does anybody have any questions about Mount Pleasant? No. Okay, what's what's next on the menu here? I'm sure everybody wants to know about um, Fenimore. Fenimore and Prospect. Yeah, yeah. I, I know, I know, I do. Yeah. So uh, at, at the beginning of the month, um, we were furnished uh, the land survey data uh, that the village collected, so that we could do our design drawings. Um, so I, I've been in touch with our site civil engineers who are doing those, and in mid January, uh, they will be presenting them. Um, for village review. So that's the 50% uh, concept development drawings um, that can be reviewed by uh, the village's engineering consultant, um, DPW foreman, um, you know, whoever needs to review those. And then once those are approved, um, we'll move forward with 100% um, design drawings so that the village can get the construction out to bid. And, and okay, thank you. Yep. It's a long time coming. Thank you. Prospect yep. Avenue parking, we don't need to look at that anymore. Okay. Uh, old White Plains Road area. Yeah, so that one, um, we had to delay our traffic and pedestrian data collection um, because of the uh, I 95 bridge closure. And um, once the bridge reopened, discussed um, with some folks in the village that should wait until uh, next spring um, so that patterns get more normalized. Uh, but, you know, we are going to front load that uh, traffic calming and, and pedestrian safety study so that once we can collect um, the, the pedestrian count data and vehicular data next spring, um, we'll be able to come up with recommendations. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a similar type of report as to the one that we prepared for Fenmore Prospect. Um, you know, it's a wide pedestrian crossing. We're gonna look at ways of calming traffic through the Grand um, intersection and uh, and old, um, old White Plains Road and uh, come up with ways to improve pedestrian safety. So that's in the works. Okay, is that it? Uh, two more small ones. Uh, sidewalk feasibility studies for, it's really uh, uh, a pair that's connected. It's uh, Orienta to um, Old Post Road um, as a result of one of the walking uh, mm -hmm. assessments we did. Yeah. Uh, we asked by the village um, to look at the feasibility of uh, a sidewalk along the, um, the, the water side of uh, Old Post Road, uh, meeting up with Orienta and uh, tying into the sidewalk that comes down Orienta from um, Boston Post Road. So that's that's more of an engineering feasibility study that will uh, tee up uh, the ability to go after um, grants similar to the ones that the village is going after for sidewalks around the Mamaroneck Avenue School. 
So we're looking at the end of January um, for those studies. There is an early win, I would say, for that. Um, the traffic study uh, component of the Old Post Road, Rich Bell Road, Boston Post Road intersection has been completed. We we're able to collect that data in the fall. Uh, good news is that looking at the um, across from Rich Bell Road, um, Old Post Road intersection, that at the very last minute by the McDonald's exit, it fans out into two small lanes. Yes. Um, that that area is a pinch point for being able to continue the sidewalk all the way to Boston Post Road because there's not enough right of way on that, I'll say the water side of Old Post Road. So we did a traffic study to look at the feasibility of taking that left turn lane. As I said, it's very short. You can only store maybe one or two cars in it and continue the conversion of the sort of shoulder of Old Post Road through that left turn lane. So we looked at it and it's, it's feasible and it doesn't cause any more delays to uh, traffic because it's kind of like just a little left turn slot. So um, I think it will better organize traffic as you're coming out of the McDonald's exit there also, because um, it's kind of a mess right now. So that, 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 I, I live right there and that, that that's a nightmare, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, people are still going to have to wait as long as they do now to get a McDonald's, not any longer, but it's going to simplify where you have people coming out, trying to jockey into the left and right lane, and mm -hmm. then pedestrians would cross in front of them on a sidewalk that would be built where that left turn lane is now. So it's we conducted that study to the high level um, that state DOT would need to review. Um, so obviously this is a village recommendation, but if any coordination needed to happen with the state or a you know, work permit or something, they would be content with the level of work that we did on that traffic study. So let me get this straight. The, the sidewalk would go along like there's that little like hill before McDonald's and then there's the McDonald's driveway and then continue parallel to where McDonald's is now? So the the sidewalk, which is now a shoulder along yes, gotcha. Old Post Road, it would continue along that path um, across the mouth of the McDonald's exit. Okay. And, and using the left turn lane next to that little hill. And then you would meet the sidewalk on Boston Post Road there. So you gotcha. have a, a continuous normal sidewalk all the way from Orienta, you know, from the harbor, all along Old Post Road. That so, would go all the way to Boston Post Road. So there would be just one lane of traffic leaving McDonald's and leaving Post Road, and you could either yeah. go straight, left, or right. Yeah, in in one lane. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So Matt, can I can I just ask what's um on on Old Post Road? now that there's it's like a painted walkway yeah um are you are you thinking a curb put in there or okay yeah yeah so we're, we're looking at the feasibility of that all right thanks a, cur a, a, a sidewalk with a curb or a curb mm -hmm. that protects the no it should be a raised sidewalk with a curb okay okay that's thanks. that's safer for yeah yeah Re regular yeah. sidewalk with a curb probably okay. also not as um susceptible to like snow plow damage and things like that. Yeah, yeah, the, the real deal. Thank you. And All right. a, a bit of an ulterior motive to get this to a certain amount. So we, it would also open us up to things like the transportation alternatives program, uh, grant funding stream, which will open up again you know, in uh, 2023. Uh, but we can see what other grant programs are there in the, in the interim as well. I mean, I can't tell you how many kids walk to school along that road every day yes. to Central. I mean, these are little kids, so this is huge. Yeah, it's a Central Hummocks and High School. It's like they all converge right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we have a great crossing guard there, Mr. Cullen, but uh, he has his hands full. Yeah, yeah, it's a tricky crossing. 
Matt, <clears throat> on Old Post Road, are you feel that it's better to have, right now there's parking on the right side going from Orienta to the Post to Post Road. Yeah. And there is a marked sidewalk area, if you will, on the left side. Yeah. Do you think that that's the best approach or that it might be better to have the sidewalk on the right side and then parking and then, and then the traffic lane? Um, you know, if, if it was being built all over, um, you know, that, that tends to work a little better because um, the driver is then not opening their door and into the traffic lane. But I would imagine that People have gotten used to parking on one side as opposed to the other, and people have been walking on one side as opposed to the other. So it, it hadn't really dawned on me to look at the feasibility of that, just given how rooted people are in, in it working that way. And we, we haven't heard whether that's a problem or not. You know, if that is a problem, you no, know, I, we can I, consider I, it. I was thinking of it from an entirely different vantage point. I was taught as additional protection for a sidewalk. If you have parked cars, a curb, and a sidewalk, that's safer than no parked cars. And you know, you're right. Yeah, and, and you know that. So keeping the sidewalk on the side that it is would be my recommendation. Um, but I like your idea of then moving the parking to the left side, uh, because as a somebody who walks a lot of places, I prefer a row of parked cars right out board of my sidewalk because then it buffers you from passing cars. It's quieter, it's safer. So that, yeah, that's my preference. Um, yeah. That, that can be done. Um, uh, it, it doesn't change the feasibility of the sidewalk on the side of the street that we've been asked to look at. So I, I like that as a kind of a, a bonus of the project. I like it. I like it too, but it, it, it's not like moving uh, parking has never been an issue in this village. No, but I, I, I think both, both sides should be looked at if we're doing the study. I think that's... No, I understand. I understand. I'm just reminding everybody that anytime you talk about moving parking across the street, uh, people think it's their constitutional right to not have cars in front of their house. Yeah, I'm totally aware of that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's it. Matt, do you have anything else for us? No, no, thanks for uh, the time to uh, present on what we've been up to. And thanks for the interesting work. I've, I've enjoyed it. Thank you, Matt. Thank you for, for you, you. Thank you for being on those walking assessments, too. You know, when you were there, it, it was it was so informative to listen to you and to listen to Shannon Purdy. And I, I, I got yeah. a, little bit of, a little bit of an education. And I appreciate it. Yeah, likewise, I, I'm glad that you've come and we've gotten, you know, sort of the historic perspective uh, because, you know, people like Shane and I can go out there, but if we don't have people that have walked those roads, really know them, the, the local mm -hmm. experts, we're only getting half of the perspective. So I hope, uh, I hope you guys do more in, uh, next year with those walking assessments. I do too. Merry Christmas to you and your family. Happy holidays. Thank you. Happy holidays, everybody. All right, bye. Okay, the next item on our agenda. Okay, and just so you know, we have a bunch of items on for the regular meeting. Uh, so let's try and, you know, so, and then we're stopping at seven for executive session. So let, let's just try and power through a couple more. Uh, enforcement of multiple dwelling awaiting additional information. Use of American rescue funds. Staff? Uh, at, at the last work session, uh, the you know the the concept we talk about the concept of uh, using uh, part of the money for salary increases for employees who uh, we deferred uh, full increases for for the 20, 20, 21 fiscal year. Uh, so uh, you would ask us to run an analysis of that. Um, I I know for the people who got hard copies, uh, you have an eleven by seventeen sheet. And it still looks pretty small. Uh, let me just uh, uh, let me uh, pull that up. I can find it here. Um, one moment. No, I, sorry. You know what we found is that the overall impact, if we were to do that, uh, was going to be somewhere around. 
uh, you know, twenty-seven thousand four hundred fifty-eight dollars uh, for increases for uh, the non-union staff who whose uh, increases were deferred or, or you know, uh, not uh, revised uh, during that fiscal year. So that that, but that still leaves. So it would be a small uh, piece in the overall of the overall uh, approximately two million dollars that we'll be receiving in uh, ARPA funds. That's uh, a, I, I that's think a one percent change. Uh, uh, well, uh, it's it's a little different because it's it's one percent and then the increase uh, for this year based on the one percent increase retro. So it's 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 it. The short answer is yes, but it's a little there's a little complexity to it. Okay, but it's, it's, it's a general generally a small number. As I understood it, the last session it was there was the difference of one percent between the raise that was given to non-represented staff to then to represented staff. Am I correct in that? Correct. But if if um, then there will be the increase for this year. Remember, the increase we received this year was based on. No, wait, 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 hold on, sir. That, that's not totally correct. Uh, yeah. The two percent was what was proposed for non-represented staff. Represented staff got an even larger increase. But we proposed originally two percent for non-represented staff, and then when COVID hit, we only gave them one percent. Uh, the represented staff, I think, was getting two and a, two and three quarters or something. So what what this was is giving staff the raise that that the my you know the paltry raise that we were originally going to give them, we cut in half, and then we never made them whole. This one percent would be making them whole of the small raise that we were going to give them. Right. So let, let's take out of this that this was represented versus unrepresented. That that wasn't the case. This has just had to do with unrepresented. Okay. Kelly, have you had it? Um, I did, and and I, you know, and and thank you, Dan, because then you made it retroactive for this year and included the bumps, so that it, it's 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 looking back and making them whole as if we had given them the 2% as opposed to the 1%. I think we, I think this is a small amount of money and it's, you know, I think we should do it. I mean, I just absolutely think we should do this. These people worked harder than, I mean, it was, it's been remarkable. And, and it would be nice to do it around this time of year. Yep. Is everybody okay with putting this on the agenda for two weeks? Nor if you're saying something, you're muted. Short meeting. We don't really do business. So would it be four weeks? All right. And first meeting in know. January. You know, that's, I'm just saying it's just the end. It's just the you're right. You're right. Let's, let's do the first meeting in January. Is that okay with the rest of you? Yes. It's 20 something thousand dollars for people that needed it and deserved it and earned it. And then we could talk about what to do with the rest of it. Jerry's in his 1950s mode. <laughs> in black and white. Colorblind blind tonight. So, so did Dan share with you? I think it's in the backup. The other municipalities, very few of them are using it for premium pay. Right? You saw that? Yeah. That's for bonus. Up. Right. Yeah, I think yeah, we, um, uh, I, so that's good. Yeah, but with the other, I think one of the examples that was in there was Scarsdale, who has used it for very much the same reason that uh, the board is proposing to use it, which was they deferred increases for non union personnel and they used the ARPA funds to make up for that. So, union personnel received 2% plus. A flat eight hundred and fifty dollars. That's what was negotiated, not two percent. So, is everybody okay with putting this on the agenda for January? Yes, I am. Nor are you. 
Dan? Yes. Victor? Okay. So let's put this on the agenda for January. And thank you to those hardworking men and women who kept us going. Uh, next item on the agenda, filling of vacancies. We're waiting to hear back from uh, the Attorney General. No, Mayor, that's not correct. Well, uh, then correct I, me. On the agenda, I put the uh, draft letter. I wanted you to review it before I sent it. Oh. To the Attorney General, to make sure you were comfortable with it. Just to let everybody know, I'm working from my computer tonight because I left, I had to go get COVID tested and all of this stuff, and I left my uh, other stuff at home. At, not at home, at work. I read it. I think it's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. We'll yeah. I had back. a, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions with it? I had a question uh, that I emailed and it was, it was answered. So we're, we're fine. I'm fine with it. Thank can you. you. What was you remind us what that was? Oh yeah. My, my question was whether the letter, I'm sorry, Dan. Um, my question was whether the letter should speak about the referendum, but it's not necessary. Okay. Let me get back to the Novus agenda. Uh, rental registration program, do we have anything on that? I didn't think there was anything new. Jared, do you have anything to say on that? Mayor, in light of what's going on, I never set up a meeting yet. Uh, we'll see how this thing shakes out. Okay, with, with the uh, committee? Uh, yeah, with your committee. <laughs> okay. Uh, the constant and harassment of staff. I, I redid this memo. I'm sure you've all had a chance to look at it. Uh, I would like to move it to the agenda for January. But have any questions or concerns? I, I I think it's fine. This is like such vanilla language. I wish it, I wish the language were stronger, but um, I think it's a symbolic and important thing to do. Of course, I think it should be on in January. Anybody else? I had asked that by sub council on it, and I will in, I will follow on that. Uh, Victor, we, we had a meeting with the council. I have asked for advice Hold of council, on, Victor, and I'll talk about it. I, I have my right for that, so I don't, Victor, stop I don't think how you, how you can override me. I'm just saying. I'm no, saying I'm, I'm just a, a point of interest. We had a meeting with the council, and you never brought it up. Yes, it has not been fully, fully cleared. So it's just, you, you, you were supposed it's to bring it up when we met with the council. You didn't stays. bring it up. It seems like a stalling tactic. No, no, it's not stalling. Well, I, let's, I think we you, should not say, uh, actually, we should not say what was discussed or was not discussed. The, the, uh, there are many things were discussed. And this, in my view, it was. You, you specifically it, it was, said you were going to no, bring this up with the council. You specifically said this at the last meeting. You said, when we meet with the, with the, with the labor attorney, We'll discuss this. We met with the labor attorney. You didn't bring it up. That's your view. I, it's not my I differ, view. The fact. I, I differ. I differ from you. Oh, you can yeah. laugh, Ms. Uh, Deputy Mayor, which I think it's irrespectful. Let's not laugh about something very absolutely serious. She's smiling. Absolutely She's not serious. laughing. And keep keep her yes, this, this is between you and I. This is well, between you I, and I. I have everybody on the screen, and this is a between me, you, this board. We have counsel. We have the public. This is very serious. So okay. I'm not. This is so, serious. Wait a minute. I've, wait asked a minute. To be, I've asked this to be addressed this, since the this summer. This was already. Uh, this was discussed it, at the it, meeting. I wouldn't say the details, discussed. and it will be discussed again. You know, it in my be, view, is my one vote. My opinion. I think it should be tabled. But I, all the colleagues can opine. I think yeah, it's I'm the sure. right thing to do. Anybody has the right to ask for advice of counsel, and I think it's appropriate. Yeah, he, he asked for it, and then he didn't take advantage of it. Tom, you know, Dan, it, stop. We, that's what happened. Are, you all know excuse that happened. me, I'm talking. Thank you very much. That, that's exactly what happened. This was supposed to be are, taken are care of before this. It, this is a, it's a sham. It's not a sham, and you're entitled to your opinion. Yeah, oh, yeah, I know. 
I'm entitled to my opinion. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Dad, for giving me my opinion. Entitled to it. Thank you. I appreciate that. It would be nice if you would be courteous enough not to interrupt others. That you Go ahead, to. Dan. So, you know, uh, Victor's asked for advice of counsel. It's inappropriate. Any, any board member can ask for that. And that's what we should do, period. I will say this again. He asked for the advice of the counsel, and he didn't bring it up when we met with the counsel. And now here we are two weeks later, and he's asking for advice of counsel again. So, you know, it, if, if it was your resolution, I'm sure you would feel that it was being purposefully delayed. I'm sure you would. So try and look at it from that perspective. This is something that's been on the agenda since July. I, I made a, a, a conscious effort to try and make it more palatable for some of you. And I did. And now it still has to be an advice of counsel. It's really outrageous. I mean, this is a resolution that says we support our staff and we don't think the public should harass them. Yeah. And it is it, it, it's we, and we need a, and we and we can't we can't move forward on this really this will be the first thing we discuss in this advice of counsel and i'll bring it up so i make sure it gets brought up All right, let's go to stuff that has to be done tonight. Uh, 1N. Yeah, Street Street, Waverly Avenue and Prospect Avenue. Uh, Mr. Sarnoff, give us the Reader's Digest version of this. Yeah, um, I had I sent an email to the board on Friday asking that we hold this item until the 27th uh, while we uh, do further due diligence on the- Thank you. Uh, okay, good enough. Thank you. Wait, are we gonna do it on the 27th, which is just the- well, No, we're gonna, asking, do it, we're gonna do it in January. Well, uh, the reason I asked for the 27th is, I think there's a 45 day award window for the bid. And I think the 27th falls within that. Okay, gotcha. All right, so this will be the one item, this will be the one yeah, item I mean, on the 27th. It, it, yeah, I just wasn't uh, okay. comfortable presenting. So the one item we do on the 27th. Okay, thank you. Agreement of the Town of Mamaric for construction and maintenance of sidewalks to be installed as part of the Waverly Avenue Bridge project on for regular meeting. Uh, you know, uh, coincidence that it's on this meeting, but uh, you know, the Town of Mamaric has a Bridge New York grant for the replacement of the Waverly Avenue Bridge that money comes from the Department of Transportation. The Department of Transportation has asked for the town of Mamaroneck and village of Mamaroneck to enter into an agreement regarding the sidewalks on the approaches to the bridge that will be constructed by the town, but ultimately maintained by the village. Uh, the reason being, I think the, the, the state just wants to make sure that um, because they're funding a town project, a component of a town project that is not ultimately maintained by them, they just want a record of how it's maintained. Well, who's, Tan, who maintains the bridge? This isn't the sidewalks on the bridge. No, this no, is no. the sidewalks on the approaches leading to the bridge. But in, in terms of the uh, maintenance responsibilities, uh, that's governed by uh, our 2004 stipulation and settlement um, I think like, you know, gentlemen's like, you know, sweeping and cleaning is our responsibility. Uh, if there needs to be a capital replacement of a sidewalk on the actual bridge structure, I believe that's the town, but I have to, uh, review the, uh, the agreement to, uh, give you the definitive answer. Okay. So what you're asking for is for the sidewalks that are not on the bridge that approach the bridge. Is that what that's I'm correct? Yes. But you have to check the agreement to see if the rest of it is. I, I, I'm 99% sure that uh, for like the what we call the daily maintenance, the village is responsible. 
I think if there's general maintenance, those are town items. But I, I, I have a, um, a spreadsheet detailing all this. I can update the board with the uh, correct answer tomorrow. Uh, I don't have a problem as long as it's stipulated that, you know, that it's the sidewalks that are in the village that are the approach to the Oak Ridge. Yes, I believe the agreement uh, specifies it that. It does. The agreement also specifies the 2004 stipula stipulation and settlement, which I believe is attachment B or C to the, uh, the agreement. Okay, thank you, Dan. Um, what's this, the Joint Waterworks project uh, bonding the- You've skipped over B. What? You skipped over design services for transfer station roof. No, I didn't. No, I, I, I sent email to the board. Hold on, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where is that? That's B on new business. But, but, but Dan, no, it's not. Yeah. It's not. Dan, I'm going to run the meeting. B on the new business is what's just the joint waterworks on for regular meeting. Okay. That's C. Yeah. It's B on mine. I think there was a change in the schedule. I think the staff asked that B be removed, but I'm working from the online agenda. Yeah. Okay, Dan. I'm looking. Yeah. Uh, this is what I'm looking at. This right. Is what it's and, right, Dan. It's just, it's just that it's been changed. That's all. Okay. So that's not on. B is not on for the regular agenda. Is that what I'm hearing? Yes. It's on. Well, you had an email about that today. But for the for the public that's following along, it's on the online agenda as B. So we're actually dealing with C. So I think it's just semantics. Okay. Okay. Once again, two B. West is a joint waterworks for I like UV treatment. Uh, this bond resolution is basically just says uh, it, it allows us to apply for uh, for grants and for, you know, for, and for you know money from the, the government. Dan, is that right? That's correct. It's part of a requirement for uh, environmental facilities corporation grants. Uh, that each municipality who applies for a grant has to demonstrate that they have uh, committed uh, funding through the adoption of a bond authorization. Okay, thank you. Any questions or concerns? Okay. Uh, Intermissible agreement for DEC grant for Recycle Right app. Dan or Jerry? This is, um, this is an agreement with 14 municipalities, one of them being a city that allows us to uh, apply for a grant through the DEC and work with sustainable Westchester. Tarrytown is the lead uh, agency, so we have to have an intermunicipal agreement uh, so we can get the money and then pay back Tarrytown um, so gotcha. we can get reimbursed. Yep. It's uh, unnecessarily complicated. Welcome to go. I think we're, we get $3,500 or something like that. Yeah, for 3,500 bucks, yep. But it's more complicated for Terrytown than for us. <laughs> yeah, yes. God, God bless him. Yeah. yeah, this is our, our old friend Rich Singleton doing this. Uh, motel licenses on for regular meeting. This is just, everybody's looked at it. They all passed inspection. I have. I, I just had one question. I'm sorry to be like so completely mired in the details, but um, there was a question on the police department report that Mr. Patel explained he was the sole owner after buying the, out his nephews. So that's why he's not, he's the only name on the application, not more than him alone. And that the village hall was going to confirm that. Was that confirmed? I didn't. I didn't know that that we needed to confirm that. I was not aware. Okay, I you know it's it probably it it, it may be irrelevant. Um, it's just you know whose name is on the application, and it's this year is different in the past than in the past. I I don't have a you know I don't suspect the, there's something weird going on here. Vom host just unmuted. Sally, you have something. Trustee Winship, I can check the tax bill to see if their names have been removed from that property. 
but it may not be updated as we're about a year and a half behind the town who gets those kind of changes. Okay. Yeah. But I can check during the break. Okay. But they, this is something that uh, these run out on the first of the year, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. So. I, I wouldn't hold it up. I was just wondering Thank if we had crossed if the T's. If it's not on KVS, Trustee Winstrip, I will find out for you tomorrow and let you know. Uh, don't don't worry about it. I'm, I'm, I'm just making sure we're crossing the T's and dotting the I's. Okay, thank you. Uh, budget amendment to fund human resources contractual account for retention of 207C uh, police disability management services. Uh, Jerry, you want to explain this? So... As we go through our 207C individuals that work for the village that are not currently working, but are waiting for some kind of um, resolution, um, I, had, uh, I had payroll and, and human resource do an analysis of what we receive when someone is on sick leave for an extended period of time, or workman's comp, sorry, for an extended period of time, and in fact, we only collect about 35% of what we actually pay out from workman's comp. So in the case study that I had Dan send out today, we lose several hundred thousand dollars the longer these individuals stay on workman's comp. So it is uh, extremely beneficial for us to have some help, some expert help in, um, managing the 207C police disability um, provisions of the law. So that if an individual is on workman's comp and probably doesn't or isn't going to return, that we move the process along a little bit quicker so that they can uh, apply for something else other than returning to work. I wish I could be more vague, but I, I can't be more vague than that. Uh, you're not very good at vague. I know. So, what I what I don't understand, Jerry, is how we were told in previous cases uh, that the process could be speeded up. So, how does this speed up the the issue? By having someone working on it all the time, as opposed to intermittently with uh, all the other responsibilities that the staff has, which is a very small office there uh, in human resources. And this is an area that cost us a significant amount of money. Somewhere in the neighborhood of $100,000 a year per employee. So getting some help and at the same time having our human resource staff learn some of the things and the tricks that this consultant can do uh, will only benefit us in the future. The longer these individuals stay on 207C, uh, the more money just the, the, the village bleeds, so. I appreciate the analysis, Jerry. I mean, I didn't know there was such a consultant out there. I think this is a great idea. Yeah. Yeah, we, it's a, uh, you know, and it, it's something that we have to try. And if it's not going to work out, then then we tried. But the money that can be saved is is uh, significant. So, so the can you go through with the economics of the consultant? The consultant is basically by the hour. What we're doing is we're putting a cap or not to exceed number um, for an estimated annual cost of fifteen thousand. But we pay by the hour, and the okay. rates are in the backup. Right. So this is fifteen thousand for like a calendar for a full year, not just the rest of this year. And yep, then, a full year. And you'll get a sense at the end of this year how effective it is. Yep. And we have cases that they can currently work on. It's not like we're we're uh, we're waiting for something to happen. We have several cases that we need to work on right now. And, and if there's no work, we're not. You know, we're not. That's correct. Not sending them work. Yep. If there's no work, we, we can't send them work if there's no one on, on workman's comp. Right. Okay. So I'm just, the $15,000 is a retainer against a per, a per hour uh, 
thing, or the fifteen thousand is a cap for all the hours for the for the year. Yeah, That's it's it. a budgeted amount for the, all the hours for this year, which I don't think will exceed. Th this year being twenty one or twenty two. Yeah. No, this is a budget amendment for this year. In our fund for this year. And then I'll have a better idea of what we need uh, in the next budget season, God willing. Uh, I'm doing, so we have fifteen thousand dollars for the next month. Oh. No, no, we 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 finish in May. We don't finish I'm in January. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. So it's from it's from basically December through May. Is that what I'm hearing? That's correct. And only because we have a couple of active cases right now that we think we need this kind of money. We'll be able to adjust that based on the number of individuals we have going in from year to year. Okay. Victor had his hand up. Victor, go ahead. That uh, it, is, it is per hour, the, 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 uh, the offer. Uh, so, so if it's gonna be cap, if we're gonna authorize it, we should put that, that limit in, in the resolution and the paperwork. Yeah, we can add it if you want. There's no problem there. Sure. As it is now, it's per hour. And As it is, it's per hour, but the, the, the ask is only 15,000. We won't exceed that 15, but if you wanna do it not to exceed, sure. That's okay with me, I don't care. No problem there. Yeah, but not to exceed without board of trustees authorization. Yeah, that's fine. This way, it, it's not a stricture against you. Never could exceed it. Maybe and maybe to, to give us uh, some info, like when you're at the ten mark or something, how it's going. Kind of. Okay. Well, actually, I think you'll receive info as individuals' uh, cases are resolved, and then we'll let you know how much this individual helped us and how much he charged and all of that stuff. You'll be getting reports every three weeks. Yeah, you'll, you'll get you'll get you'll get the information as it comes in. Okay, yeah, thank you. All right, uh, budget amendment to fund park overtime. Uh, we have the um, the IT assistance before that, Mr. Mayor. It's it's not highlighted as on for a regular meeting. I think that's what Tom's trying to pull. Flat. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah. No, it's not highlighted. Okay. Right. So if only we have time. Uh, the parks is is just a a small uh, transfer from contract services to. Uh, to overtime for a little bit of uh, extra overtime that we incurred over the year. But it's not, is it from fund balance or is it a transfer? It's a transfer. It's a transfer. It's, it's $3,000 from contract services to the, uh, to the overtime line, yep. $3,000. That's what I have at least on mine. Yep. Okay. So what, what type of projects, that's pretty cool, but how, what type of projects uh, were they doing that we didn't have the contract services for or need Some for? of the, uh, I can get you that list. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what projects, but we can have that to you by tomorrow morning. If Jeff, if the department heads were here, we would ask them. They're very creative. Mayor. We lost him, Sally. He's not on my screen. We did lose him. He either is. So his battery died. He asked Deputy Mayor Winstrup to continue. He'll be on as soon as it charges up. I'm calling him. Oh, okay. You know, I heard. I heard my home a... line. My landline was ring, was ringing, and I do not answer the phone during meetings. So, um, just maybe suggest I take a recess. Of course, Mayor, uh, Deputy Mayor, you can lead on, but also we could just 
take a 10 minute yeah. recess. Why, why is that? Allow, allow him time to come back. And, and oh, can, well, you know what? I, I think can, let's just take, we're supposed to go into executive session in 20 minutes and we still have some things from the regular meeting. Maybe we can just bang those out in five or 10 minutes and then take a recess to make sure we get these covered. So everyone's fine with the parks overtime of $3,000. Is that right? Yep. Okay. So the next, and Tom's back, but I guess the next would be the, um, Ida. Uh, the Ida overtime oh, budget amendment, yeah. which was that a particular department? That's what I was wondering, because I know there were no, several. So, so, so now that the Ida um, state of emergency is over, yeah, um, we just need an additional fifteen thousand dollars to cover the overtime that was charged. Uh, that we need to charge, you know, uh, FEMA on that line, uh, yeah. so that we can pay that out, uh, and then that'll do it on the overtime for Ida. Some of Are which we, we might get back. Huh? Some of which we might get back. Yeah, no, we'll. Most we'll of get which, back right? Overtime, we'll get back straight time, we'll get back everything. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. every, everyone's okay with that going on? Yes, I, I'm back on. I'm sorry, my battery Great. died. Great. Well, feel free to take over. <laughs> uh, what would you just do, the Ida? Yeah. Yeah, we did parks and Ida. Oh, good job. Uh, budget amendment to fund conversion and uploading of Village of Marriott Board of Trustees meetings. Minutes, maybe. Uh, this is on laser fish. Who wants to talk about this? Sally? Jerry? Yeah. So um, this is a request. This is a request from uh, the clerk treasurer's office. And I think the total is 11,250 from, I think it's microfilm to laser fish, if I'm right. Yes. And I'm, yeah, go ahead. I unmuted myself. Sorry, I couldn't okay. get back to my screen. Um, we have, as you all know, we have our minute books going back to the very first meeting of the Board of Trustees in the safe that's across from my office. And we don't have them anywhere else but on microfiche, which is sitting under a chair in my office. So if we were to have something happen to 123 Mimaronic Avenue, we would lose all of that. So this is to convert the microfiche two electronic documents and then general code will take those electronic documents and convert them to laser fiche so they can be searched by the public on our document portal when we get municipality five up and running and more importantly we'll have them forever so that's it in a nutshell sounds like a good nutshell to me anybody have any questions or concerns so this is compatible with uh um with municip municipality municipality trustee natchez yeah go ahead dan you know it's, it's compatible with laser fish now uh that laser fish is our document uh, storage system but it, the the like sally mentioned the goal is to uh you know get these items into the cloud so that it will never be lost hopefully it's a lot less expensive to do it this way than it would be to actually try and scam the books themselves. Augie and I got a quote on that years ago and they would have to take pictures of the pages because they're so old and it was upwards of $100,000 to do and that. I know you've tried to get grants for it. So yes, I think this is a really good solution. Um, and Trustee Natchez, I believe it will be compatible with Municity five from laser fish, so it can be searchable. They can be searchable through the document portable once we have Municity five up and running. But, but right now, in order to look at them, you have to take this, but the actual physical piece of microfiche and put it in a machine, right? Which we do not have. Our microfiche machine died a few years ago, so we have yeah. no way to look at them. It used to be where the court sort of downstairs collection office is. Mm -hmm. Jerry, can we get a schedule for con uh, converting to uh, Municipality 5? 
a time line. I have it. I'll send it to you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Thank you. That would be very helpful. And while I'm here, Tom, one, excuse me, Mayor, item 2F is on the regular meeting, even though it's not highlighted, for the part-time assistant for the IT department to assist with the Municipality 5 implementation that is on tonight's regular meeting. Okay, let's go back to that. And thank you for uh, pointing that out to me, Sally. Uh, budget amendment to fund part-time assistant for IT department to assist with the Municipality 5, Municipality 5 uh, implementation. Jerry, you want to talk about that? Sure. So, so Mayor, the and and board, the uh, I'll send you the the timeline and the plan uh, from our director of IT uh, that he provided to me regarding uh, the implementation of Municipality Five, but um, he's going to be the lead on it. Um, and while he's involved in that, uh, we're looking to bring on a part-time uh, IT individual to help us with the other stuff that Cliff typically does. Uh, during uh, during the day. Um, he does a lot of stuff uh, regarding monitoring our, our service and our systems, and this individual will do that, but he also does um, support to every office uh, in uh, 123 and the firehouses. And so this individual will be able to uh, help us with that while we are um, moving forward with uh, Municipality 5 and the IT department, Joe at the PD, as well as uh, the building uh, department staff. So we're going to just, we needed to get Cliff some help uh, and this was the best solution for us. So two questions. First of all, how long do you think it's gonna to take to convert to municipal five? Just the end date. We're talking the about- whole, The whole year. So the part-time position is a permanent position for a year or a permanent position after the year? The, what we're asking is for the end of uh, May, end of May, 2022, to fund him while he starts, while Cliff starts in January working on the project. So it's just under a thousand dollars. No, it's ninety five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Six months. Sorry, just under ten thousand dollars. Yeah, just under ten thousand dollars. Six months. And then possibly the same for the next six months. That's correct. But but the individual the individual we're thinking of may already have a job by that time or sometime at the end of the summer, so uh, we 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 really don't know yet until we you know we get closer to the uh, Memorial Day uh, but holiday. It's very much a part time position for you. Yep, part time position, supporting IT uh, the IT director and the police department um, okay. IT employee. Okay. Does anybody have any problem with this being on the agenda for today? No? Nope, good. all good. Okay, uh, Westchester County Municipal, the Westchester County Police Mutual Aid Plan. Uh, um, go ahead. It expired in July of last year, I think. I have to get the dates right. Uh, and it'll go for an additional five years. So it's basically you help us, we help you. That's all it is. And most most municipalities uh, are involved yes. in this. Yes, most municipalities are. It and it works through it. it works through the Chiefs Association um, of Westchester County. Let me see if the dates. Let me just get the dates again because I think that it expired a year ago, or more than a year ago. So are we, we posting this? Yeah, it expired June thirtieth of last year. Yeah, June thirtieth of yes last year. It ends June July thirtieth. I'm sorry, July thirty first of of last year, and it, this agreement ends July thirtieth of twenty twenty five. Okay. Okay. I'm assuming everybody's fine with that. Yes. Okay. Uh. Let's go back up to, we got everything that's on for tonight. So that's good. Uh, we have a few minutes. Uh, zoning strategies are waiting. Uh, Sue rent fee. Yes, at, at the last meeting, the board asked for some additional analysis on how the uh, sewer rent fee is applied in the town of Maranek and the town of Harrison. And I compared 
uh, what our rates would be based on our current revenues. Uh, the town of Maranek, uh on a 12 month basis calculates their sewer rent fee based on 90% of the water consumption. The town of Harrison uh, for the months of, I believe it's November through April or uh, yeah, November through April charges at 100% uh, for the of consumption for the months of May through October, uh, whatever the rate the consumption is in May is the assumed consumption for those other months. Uh, it is very similar in how the village methodology is created. Uh, the village tried to um, uh, base its rate or, or account for the um, the usage or account for uh, irrigation usage, which is water that does not go back into the sanitary sewer system. Um, so, and I, so they, the difference between the town of, of Harrison and the village of Mamaroneck is that uh, we have a variable rate based on usage. The uh, town of Harrison is a static rate based on a variable of consumption. And because the rate is static for the town of Harrison, that uh, obviates the uh, programming issue that the Westchester Joint Waterworks has, which uh, would cost them additional dollars to uh, program in a new building system. So what is staff recommendation? Um, are they both valid approaches? I mean, if, if, the, um, if the board wants to continue with the methodology that we currently have, the town of Harrison is most, close, most closely aligned with that methodology. So. Dan, can you walk through that again with numbers? So you're, you're saying that the town of Harrison has, goes, takes whatever it is for May? Uh, let me uh, pull up my, the memo uh, just so I can uh, uh, go over that. Okay. Uh, so the, uh, yeah, but just let me point out something about the town of Harrison. The town of Harrison has a lot of golf clubs. A lot of golf clubs. So they might have done theirs differently because of that. They they might have five or six huge golf courses. Um, yeah, that that's that's accurate. Uh, our two largest water users in the village are Westchester County uh, with the wastewater treatment plant, and the uh, we have Arctic Ice. Uh, which is another huge consumer of water. Um, I, I don't know, because uh, in the spreadsheet that was given to me by the Waterworks, um, you know, we exempt certain properties. I don't know if the town of Harrison or town of Mamaroneck do the same. No, but, uh, but, it, but Dan, in essence, the town of Harrison is almost exempting what the mayor said is golf courses by just charging for the months of June to October the equal amount of May. It's yeah, almost right. exempting them. So that's that that's accurate, but it's the also the um, they're that's because they're setting the uh, they're basing the, the the rate during those months for residents and uh, for residential and commercial uh, on us on us on a set usage from a specific yeah. month. Yeah. But the um, like I said, in terms of methodology, the town of Harrison is seems to be more consistent with the village of Mamaroneck, um, except that, uh, like I said, they have a static rate uh, and the, con the consumption is the variable, whereas we have consumption as the static rate, uh, uh, as the static number with the rate as somewhat of a variable. So like I said, both uh, uh, the town of Mamaroneck may be the uh, the the more understandable. It's just a flat. It's a, a rate every month 
based on 90% of, of, the, of the usage. The town of Harrison is a little more elaborate, but it is more in line with how we do it here in the village. But, but, okay. Uh, what would be, I mean, it, 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 I, I don't, you know, I, I'm, I have questions about the town of Harrison because of their golf courses. And I, and I, I would, you know, I, I would rather go with the town of America because they're more closely aligned to our demographic. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, it, and it actually brings us a little more money. Well, I mean, the, 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 the rate is, had I made it um, one penny more, it would have been, these are just examples of how we would raise the revenue. A one penny difference brings in more money than, than we have, we're currently bringing in. So. Sorry, one penny difference brings more money than the what? Well, the, in the, in the backup, uh, you know, I said that uh, um, if you look at the town of Mamaroneck, um, if we had, uh, you know, 83 cents per CCF, uh, it would be, uh, you know, less than what we're currently. Okay. Sorry, so, 80, oh, if oh, I put it 85 cents, it'd be more than 588. Oh All right. So we have to pick one here. Yeah. What? I mean, that, yeah, that's, that's what we're, we're seeking. I, I think either one is, um, gotcha. um, yeah, either gotcha. one's justifiable. Uh, all right. I, 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 I always favor more simplicity. I remember when this was being talked about by Trustee Potok years ago, and it became very convoluted. And um, I, I, I always think simpler is better. I, I, my concern is I don't know what really the whole point of this was. During the summer, people uh, do not use it for irrigation, use a lot of water for irrigation and does not go back into the sewer. And we were trying to come up with an approach that did not penalize them for the use of the water that was not going back into the sewer system. That, that's, that's why the town of Mamaroneck has it at 90%. Right. That was, that was the way they dealt with that because I was over there at that time. And I was exactly to deal with that situation that you just uh, talked about. So you're saying 90% over the year equates to what is the increase in usage during the summer versus the average? Yes, that's what they figured. Has staff worked out any number or has somebody worked out any numbers currently, whether that's true or not? In, in terms of whether 90% of the town of Maronex. Whether if we use it, if we, if we adopt the 90%. That that's really a yes, we're, we're still getting the same amount of money. Yeah, the, the if you, if we use ninety percent, uh, we would. It's an algebra problem. We have a total we want to get to. We know uh, the number yes. of CCFs being used, so you, you work backwards to figure out the rate. Okay. It, right. Exactly. Exactly. It, it brings in the same amount of money. Both these, both of these bring in the same amount of money. The simplicity is, is that people can know what their rate is going to be, you know, at, at any time. That's why I want to go with the town of Maris for now. But let's just make a decision because those are our options. Kelly, what about you? Um, I. I I think I've already said, I think the easier way is better. Easy, easy peasy. Laura? I think convoluted is confusing for everybody. I think the town is, I think the town is easier, is easier and it's gonna be easier for the public to understand. Yes. I agree. I think that okay. we need to try and explain it in our newsletter. Okay. Victor, you arrived up? Okay, he's nodding ascension. Uh, all right, it's 6.57. We need to make a motion to go into executive session. Hold on, let me get the motion. Here, I'll make the motion that we go into executive session to discuss um, 
under 1051D of the New York State Public Officers Law, um, a discussion regarding proposed pending or currently litigation. Also under 1051H of the New York State Public Officers Law to discuss the proposed acquisition, sale, or lease of real property um, on Garden Road. And also to go into ex uh, executive session to discuss village man manager review and with labor council. So um, particular employee of the village. Yeah, we're, we're going to do labor council first. So if this all passes, uh, it, it originally it'll just be the board of trustees and the labor council. Uh, two things, uh, I thought we need the planning board as well added. Yes. Uh, and uh, on Garden Road, I will recuse myself. Yes, yeah, so we, we're gonna talk about appointments to both the planning board and the, uh, the uh, arts council, right, North? Yes. Okay. So with those caveats, uh, Kelly, you making a motion? Yes, I am. All right, I'll second. Uh, who's calling rolls tonight? Sally? I'm coming. I'm trying to get the executive session going on the other computer. Trustees Wenstrup. Yes. Thank Trustee you. Natchez. Yes. Trustee Lucas. Yes. Trustee Chaffour. Yes. yes. Victor. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. I need one minute to get the executive session going. Thank okay. you, Sal. I need five or 10, we need to adjourn. I've been two, two hours and I need to adjourn at least for five minutes. Go ahead. I'll see you in five minutes.
Everyone, we're back. The board is done with executive session. The mayor asked that I let you know that they are taking a 10 minute break. So we'll see you in 10 minutes. Thank you.
I'm not just got on it. Let's not start it now. Okay, we're going to get started in one minute. Laura, are we uh, broadcasting? You mean Sally and yes. Recording. Okay. That was rather loud. Give me one second. I just got to get something on here. Oh, the voice. Okay. Okay. Okay, good evening. And welcome to the Village of Mamari Board of Trustees meeting for December 13th, 2021. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The whole board indicated yes. Okay. Uh, adoption of agenda. The agenda is before us. Uh, would someone like to make a motion to adopt the agenda? You got to unmute yourself. And I'll just amend it to say we're going to add an appointment to the Arts Council to that. No, we, we do that as per our regulations. Okay. We do that as we move on. We're, we're adding two people to yeah, the with us. Okay. Victor made the motion. I need a second. Second. Uh, call the roll. Sally? Sally, you got to mute yourself. Sorry, Tom. Trustees Wenstrup? Everybody's got to mute themselves. Unmute yourself, Kelly. I'm sorry, no. Trustee Natchez? Yes. Trustee Tafur? Yes. Trustee Lucas? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Okay, let's move on. The first item on the agenda is an Eagle Scout project uh, by a young man named Kyle Francavilla. Mr. Francavilla, are you there, sir? Yeah, hello. Hello, buddy. Uh, so why don't, you, why don't you tell us about your project there, Kyle? Yeah, I'm just gonna share my screen first off. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Yeah. All right, I just, just wanna start off by saying thank you for having me. It's an honor to talk to you all about my project. Um, if you don't already know, an Eagle Scout project is a uh, sustainable and long-lasting community service project made by a Boy Scout who's trying to get the uh, Eagle Scout Award, which is the highest award in the Boy Scouts. Uh, I started my process in around mid-December of 2019, 2020, uh, and I was looking around for a while, but decided ultimately that Florence Park um, was the place I could make a change to. I spent a lot of time there as a kid and as a student in uh, the Rhinex School District. So I decided to install a Gaga Ball pit and do several painting installations, which um, consisted of a mural, hopscotch, and painting the wall around the playground. Um, so if you take a look, this was the park before I made any changes, um, I thought it was pretty bland in that there could be a lot added to it to make it more artistic and um, just more fun for the kids. So I spent several months planning and um, talking to the workers at Village of Mamaroneck and organizing with the Boy Scouts. And eventually um, I had to fundraise for it. So I had a tag sale and a movie night on June 12th. And uh, if you see this slide right here, this is some um, screenshots of our uh, tag sale event, which was held in Florence Park. We raised almost a thousand to two thousand dollars that day. And I, if you see, we had a food truck as well who donated around 10% of their earnings to us. Um, here you have the movie night. We uh, held Wally in Harbor Island Park that same night of June 12th. We had two food trucks there, Pizza Vitale and Westchester Burger. And with the help of volunteers from the village and from my Boy Scout troop, we were, we were able to meet our $2,500 range goal. Um, so uh, later, in uh, 2021, in June, we started uh, the mural aspect. So we had a local artist, uh, Marie McNicholas, who's also worked on the Black Lives Matter mural um, at Columbus Park. She designed all the designs that you see um, being laid out right here. So again, we turned that gray wall into a rainbow colored wall um, around the playground for the kids. And then we had a mural and hopscotch, which could be used by the children. The bigger aspect of the project, um, which most of the funds went to, was the Gaga Ball Pit. 
um, which is like an outdoor dodgeball sort of game. Uh, it took a while. It took a whole day to build. But thanks to the uh, Parks and Recs department, I was able to get it done efficiently and it's sustainable. And even to this day, there's I always see kids um, in it and I've gotten a lot of nice comments um, from parents and children in the community about how they put it to use. Um, so this is the finished project. Uh, if you see Jeff on uh, and Jason Pino, they were huge help to me, um, as well as Jerry Barbario. Uh, I, I couldn't have done the project without them. And if you just want to take a moment, those are the completed aspects of the project. It, it looks really great. I, I was down there when you had the tag sale and it was a great community event and it, it, the color really makes it pop. Good job. I appreciate that. And um, I just want to close off by saying thank you to the Village of Mamaroneck. The Parks and Rec Department made that project possible and they helped me plan organize and carry out the project and fundraiser. I want to say thanks to my Boy Scout troop who lended me their support um, of donations and volunteers and all the local businesses who sponsored my project and all of the local volunteers who donated money. And thank you, Kyle, for making our park uh, a more enjoyable place. What, what grade are you in? Uh, I'm a senior. Okay, good for you. Do you know where you're going yet? Uh, I've, I have two ideas. I got into one of them. Uh, the other one I'm still waiting on. Well, good luck to you. We, we expect great things out of you. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, you know what the chief export of this community is? Hmm. Smart children. <laughs> I would hope so. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Thank you very much Thanks for everything. having me, Mayor Murphy. You're welcome. Well done. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Yeah, get get our screen back here. Yeah, I'm just uh, <laughs> screen sharing right now. There you go. Thank you, Kyle. All right, have a good night. Have a good night, son. Thanks, Kyle. Uh, and that, the next up is a a, a swearing in of uh, now Lieutenant Trujillo. Uh, uh, PJ, could you could you unmute yourself and get on the screen? Lieutenant Trujillo. PJ. Hold on, just let me let me make a call. And we will get the lieutenant on. Is promoted. Hi, um, I, I see PJ is on the screen, but he's not picking up. No, he's yeah, he's an attendee. He's a panelist. He's a panelist. Do you have a cell? Could you give him a buzz? No, he is promoted. Oh, he's, oh, here he is. Got him. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, Lieutenant. Let me see you. Good evening. How are you? Good evening, PJ. How are you tonight? I'm doing well. Yourself? I am doing well. Um, we are here tonight to uh, swear you in. Uh, and I usually do these in person. Uh, but because of everything that's going on uh, lately, uh, with the COVID restrictions, and uh, we, we've had a few scares recently, we have to do this remotely, and, uh, and I apologize for that. I wish uh, you could be in Village Hall with your family uh, to, uh, you know, celebrate this occasion. But uh, we, you know, it, it's it's an important occasion, and uh, we want to give the opportunity for the community to see you and to watch you getting sworn in. I fully understand, and I thank you all. Okay, uh, PJ, could you? Repeat after me. Raise your right hand. I, state your name. I, PJ I, Trujillo. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. To support the Constitution of the United States of America. To support the 
Constitution of the United States of America. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New York. The Constitution and the laws of the state of New York. The laws and policies of the village of Mamaroneck and the village of Mamaroneck Police Department. The laws and policies of the village of Mamaroneck and the village of Mamaroneck Police Department. And will execute the office of Lieutenant. And will execute the office of Lieutenant. To the best of my abilities. To the best of my abilities. PJ, thank you for your past you. service and your future service. You're, you're a pleasure to work with. Uh, tell your family that we're very, very proud of you. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, we wish you luck in the future, you and the whole department. Thank you. Have a good night, PJ. Have a good night. Okay. Uh, next up is communication to the board. Uh, Glenn has his hand up. Okay, Glenn, unmute yourself, buddy. Hi, Glenn. Hello. Hello. Yeah, you're on, buddy. Yeah. Good evening, board members. Happy holiday season. And I would just like to point out to, to May, the mayor, not only do we export many very smart and intelligent children, but some of us like to stay. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of things. Um, I um, listened to the... Um, presentation New York State gave uh, a workshop uh, for the um, unspent uh, balance fund. And one of the things that they had as part of their presentation is that the operating budget of the village should be looked at and updated to reflect the actual spending of the village. Right now, we have some lines that are going to be greatly over, sales tax. We have other lines that came in short, beach, Harbor Island parking and such. And when we get to um, January, we should go and we should look at the adjustments we uh, need to make. We also have, you know, even even today, you have um, adjustments where uh, we're hiring uh, different personnel part time for different positions. There's been promotions within the police department. You need to uh, slightly adjust what you're looking at at your salaries, but just so going into the next year, as you go into the next year budget the baseline that you're gonna be used for that for next year's budget should be updated with this year's budget. That way, you know where you are and where you're going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. Have a good evening. Okay, uh, public hearing. Public hearing on PLL 1, uh, 2021, FEMA letter on map revisions. I need a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. I'll second. Uh, Sally, call the roll. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Laura, you're muted. Yes. To four? Mayor Murphy? Aye. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I see there's a, there's a hand up to talk. Uh, Kate D and Y. Mr. But on a public hearing. Hello, Kate D and Y. You, you're... Yes. Oh, sorry, I was I was muted. Um, I don't know why I'm coming up like that. Um, it's Kate De Hayes um, in the village. Um, you just. Um, I wanted to say something earlier. Um, I didn't have my hand up quick enough. So I'm not for the public hearing. It's just for a general comment. Is it too late for that? <laughs> I'll allow it now, go ahead. Okay, um, 
this is um, a follow up. I was at I was listening in on the flood committee a few weeks ago, and there was a discussion. Um, it was after I think you signed off, Mr. Mayor. It was later on about um, the idea of river maintenance in the village, which is something I'm concerned about, as we all are, um, given the condition of the rivers and what effect they may have on um, future flooding problems. And it came up in the discussion that um, that there is a, a regulation or a village code that um, <clears throat> that states that the property owner is actually responsible for maintenance of their section of the of the river um, into halfway into the river. So I'm not sure if that's actually the case, but that was asserted at the meeting. Um, what so? Because um, I, I'm sure you've all been out and about looking at the river, but it strikes me that there are a lot of um, areas where there is debris, uh, trees, uh, and situations in the river uh, that would greatly contribute to flooding uh, You know, it's at some future time. Wh what worries me is that we're being very, oh, I, I you know, the extreme events, if we look at Kentucky, uh, you know, we can't just assume that because it's winter and because it's not hurricane season, that there will be no, uh, no uh, huge uh, rainstorms that could cause flooding. So let me just give you a few examples of what I'm thinking about. For example, if you think of where CVS is, uh, it backs onto the Mameranek River very closely. Um, if you look at the river from there, you'll see there's a tree and that tree is completely covered with invasive vines. Those vines droop down into the river, nearly blocking it. Um, and they're catching, uh, there's a tremendous amount of debris and all kinds of garbage that's been building up there for months. So um, uh, you, this is just one example of many that um, I'm, I'm questioning, it's really a question whether or not the village has in your code, in your regulations. Uh, just, I can answer that. From time to time, the village staff does go into the rivers and picks up large uh, items like you're talking about. There are some places in the village where the, the homeowner owns uh, up until the middle of the river. There are some places where that's not applicable. But when okay. the village sees something that would be an obstruction, they move to take it out. Okay, um, so that would, in this case, it would not be you, the property owner who owns that building where CVS is, it would not be their responsibility, even though it's that tree is on their property. I, 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 I don't have a particular answer to that, one, but we'll have uh, DPW go out and look at it. Okay, so, you know, just going around, uh, and I know you're pressed for time tonight, you got a late start. So I wrote up my, my, uh, my comments because there are a number of areas that are, it's quite severe, where there are a lot of trees, garbage, debris, where you're, you have virtual dams that are, that are existing in the Sheldrake um, that, you know, that really, uh, they, and it's the sort of thing that, you know, could be relatively easily and relatively quickly addressed, but if not addressed, it's a huge issue. Thank you for doing that, and I appreciate that. Could you could you email them to uh, the uh, village manager or, or mayor and board? Yeah, let me. I will email my the totality of of my remarks. And some of the problems, by the way, are on village property as well. So okay, thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Kate. I appreciate it. You got it. Uh, Glenn, do you want to speak on this issue? You have your hand up again. Well, oh, sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay, there's nobody in the public that wants to speak. Does anybody in the board want to speak about this issue? Okay. Do, do we have do we have the map or the proposed map in the property? All, all we have is an, an ID number. I, I think that was given to us uh, before, wasn't it? I don't have it on me. Yeah, but it's not, it, you know, I think this is not I, urgent, correct? I can't hear you, Nora. I don't think this, there's, this is not urgent, correct? 
Well, it might be for the property owner. Well, yeah. The Lomar, the Lomar is April 20th, 2022. And I think we should have backup about it. Um, I mean, that's four months from now. I think we should have backup of what the property looks like. I also, you know, in thinking about what I mean, I don't. It doesn't seem to me to be urgent if the if this if the if the letter of map revision is dated four months from now. Um, but in light of what the um, flood mitigation committee was saying, isn't this the kind of thing that we should have them like opining on too? Well, no, 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 no. no. We're, we're, it, th this is something that you know engineers work out and then is approved. By, by, by the federal government. This isn't something that the flood committee should be opining on. I mean, yeah, so if I may, Mayor, the, Dan Sarnoff and Mark Oretschny are the ones who've been working on this and neither of them's here right now. But my understanding is that this is simply a ministerial act that FEMA tells us what, how these maps yes. have to be amended and the board just has to amend them. This is not a matter of uh, discussion or discretion. Um, <laughs> on the village board and, and, and it's never been okay. I, I know i know we got a, a long email from sue mccrory today about this but th th this this is we would be treating this property owner differently than we've treated every other property owner i'm just asking a question about how we how we adopt something that we don't have a map on as the backup <laughs> I mean, clearly there's not, there, the, member, the public isn't all that interested in this. There's nobody who's here to speak on it. But it just seems to me like at a basic, there should be a map. I don't, we don't, from this, you can't tell where the property is. I know we had it on our work session three weeks ago. Right. But, but I just think it's as a practice, we shouldn't be having a public here. And, and it's dated April 22nd, April 2022. So my question is, is this critical? Can we have a map up next time? Is there a better procedure to follow or is this the normal procedure? Well, there was a map at the work session, right? Yeah, but that was three weeks ago and we're having a public hearing and there's no map. Okay. But like when we vote on laws, public laws, we don't include, you know, all of the backup. The backup. We often do. We often do. But well, this, if this, you know, this being ministerial, I don't know why we would. adopting a map. And we don't have a, a picture of the map. So no one looking at this would be able to figure out even what the address is. <laughs> um, Dan raised a good point. I'm asking a question that this, the, the, the letter of map revision is dated, and is this correct? It's dated April 20th, 2022. So yeah, isn't that like a, a, a time when it, it's like the FEMA annual time or something? I don't know. Well, it, why is this night different than all others? We, we, we've done it this way for years. Well, you know, we, I, it, I, again, is it urgent? Can we continue the public hearing until Mark and Dan are here at, following up on Dan's question or does it have to be done tonight? Well, why wouldn't it be done tonight? The only input we've had is, is, is a, a long email from Sue McQuarrie that I think was wrong on a lot of the facts and uh, you know, it was wrong on a lot of the history. Yeah, but, uh, you know, I, so I, that, I that's the only public hearing that we've had. So that's, but, so and, and, uh, I don't know, I haven't seen yeah. today. So, okay. I guess, you know, so I don't know. I'm not, I haven't read anything about this. Well, you know, I, when I move that we, uh, that we amend it, amend chapter 186 to- we, You gotta close the public. To adopt this. Oh, well, I mean, I just- A question about the, about, about the time, because I, I, I think we've seen this in the past, but I, I never, never, I don't recall seeing something for a future date. I also think Norway has a point of having it on the map, but, but, but the issue of, of, uh, of the date may be something I, I, don't, I don't recall. Is, is that significant or what is, why are we doing something 
that it's a, just so yeah. way kind of kind of out of the calendar. I, it's something strange. I don't know. What is it? Because that's probably when FEMA sends out their new maps once a year. FEMA does not send out maps once a year. To well, best knowledge. So they, you know, they, well, it, it, his what, poor what, homeowner. What, I just, I yeah, just. What, what's so going bad. on here? What's going on here? Come on. We, we've done this for years and years and years. And we've had maps attached. Yes, and there were maps with this, Dan. There were never maps at the public hearing like this. There were maps with this when you looked at it. You know where the property is. What's the issue? I don't. I don't know where the property is. Well, you should have, because it was in your backup. Oh, Tom, where? Three is weeks ago. Where is it? This is up to you. I know where it is. You tell me where, where it is. I'm asking. I don't. I. I don't remember. You know, where do you want to do this or not? What do you want to do here? This, this, this isn't fair. This really isn't. We've to... never, we've never treated anybody else like this. You know, my initial question is, is this urgent? I'm trying to get to the old agenda and I can't get it to open. To look at three weeks ago. Why not just get it done tonight? What's going to change? What's going to change in two weeks? Well, three weeks. It's even going to be more. It's going to be a month. What will change? I can't find the map. I don't know where it is. I mean, I don't remember where it is. So I just don't know. I mean, you said you know where it is. All right. Nora, what, what, what difference does it make, really? What difference does it make if whether we know or no right now? We knew then. We looked at it. We're here tonight. We scheduled the public hearing. You all voted to schedule the public hearing. And Dan raised a good point. Yeah. Okay. No, I mean, I, 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 I think this is being driven by Sue's email. Yeah. Well, I don't know me. what email you're talking about. Oh, yeah. Come I on. Haven't. Oh, God. <laughs> no, Tom. Jesus. It's just, come on. It, you know what, Tom? It, it's it's Tom. just a veneer now. It's I'll just to, a veneer. I'll go to emails now. It's just a veneer. No, it what it is is to, is trying to be, have full disclosure. Oh. So when the, if you have a public hearing, so the public understands what it is. The, the public has not have an issue with this other than Sue McCrory. There's I'm nobody not, here. I'm sure of what Sue McCrory sure does, do. does not wish. Sure you do. Thank you for telling me what how I think. Yes. I appreciate it's, that. It's, it's very it's very helpful. This it is, is so very, obvious. It's so obvious. We've done this so many times. Oh, yes. And I, I, as they say, why is tonight different than all of the nights? You know, Tom, this- No, is, no, I, I, don't, don't give me Tom, that. Don't give me that, Nora. Just do what you're gonna not, do. You know what? Do what not, you're gonna do. I'm just I, sick of this. I'm, okay, I'm gonna do what I started to do. The date is April 22nd, <sighs> April 20th, 2022. Is it critical? Can it wait till the next meeting? That's the question I've asked. And my, and my question to you was, why are we waiting? Because I, I really, I can't look at the backup of the agenda. I don't remember where it is. And I think, Tom, I think Dan raised a point. If we're adopting a map revision to a flood map, we should know where it is. And it's my bad that I don't remember, but I don't remember. So I'm back to my question. There's, okay, there's no answer. There's this, no is, answer. this is back to, you know, we, we knew this was on the agenda tonight. We knew this, you, you sort of back up to it. And now here we are at the public meeting and all these issues are being raised. Come on. I said, I'm, you know, I'm sorry that I wasn't prepared for this today. <sighs> there's no reason that we cannot have the maps for the public to see, for the pro for the property to be disclosed. You may know all of this, Tom. Dan, it was I'm disclosed. delighted you do. It, it please, was, don't, please don't interrupt me when I'm talking. It was disclosed. Yeah, I, was, I appreciate your being courteous, Tom, and but letting Dan, somebody you finish. But disclosed. you always interrupt everybody else. I'm sorry, Dan, but when, you, when you're always factually wrong on purpose, it's hard not to interrupt you. It was Tom, disclosed. Tom, you you're it. entitled you to your opinion. You're entitled to your thought process. Oh. I respect that. 
I really do. You don't respect to... anybody else except where you're coming yes, from. Yes, and that yes. is not fair to everybody else. Oh, Dan, it's stop. Really you're so duplicitous. All right. Well, I would close the public hearing and vote on this. Uh, Nora, it would appear that you would not. Dan, it would appear that you would not. Victor, what do you want to do? You're muted, Victor. Oh. We can't, we, you were still muted. I'm unmuted now. Now, you, now you're unmuted. Yeah, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know why we're, we're delaying it, but there is a, there is a point that the, that the, that the uh, file should be complete, especially for a public hearing and adopting a law. So on that, if we need to wait, we need to wait. I think I'll, 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 I'll wave on the side of caution because it's not urgent and it'll, it'll get done when the, when the file is, uh, when we, well, the record is complete. Let's be specific. If, if that's tell, what staff, tell staff what you want in the record so this doesn't happen again in three weeks. What do you Luke, need in the record? Ms. Lucas was is, is the one pointing to, to the map or- Is there anything else there. that I just, I just opened it and I don't see it now. Is there anything else that anybody needs? Before we, we we go down this road again, we just adjourn it, pick it up. Yeah, and you you all had all this all week. Okay. Nobody asked for more backup. No, Sue, but Sue sent an email, and that's got everyone in a lather. So. Yeah. Kelly, I said yeah. this before. I haven't seen the email. I don't know what time she sent an email. Uh, I was not at my desk today for a lot of today. I was busy doing other things. Honestly, okay. when we get emails on the day of a meeting, it's really hard to keep track of them. So maybe you saw it, but I didn't see it. Okay, came at 4.45, you'll find it. Oh, well, at 4.45, I was trying to get my computer working so I could be in the meeting. So yep. I definitely didn't Yep, it. okay. Then make a motion to adjourn. So move. Make the motion. Second. I make a motion that we adjourn this to uh, the first meeting in January. Nora, second. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Wenstrup? No. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No, and this is why we don't get stuff done. Uh, new business. No order to bills. I'm sorry. Two uh, A. Hold on, give me one second. Resolution authorizing budget amendment for Hurricane Ida overtime. This is taking $15,000 out of uh, appropriated fund balance and putting it into the IDA uh, response and recovery overtime line. Questions or concerns? Just that we're likely to get this money back from in FEMA reimbursements. I think we should say that. Jerry? We're gonna get tens of millions of dollars back. So okay. the public knows, that's all. Because we spent a lot of capital, a lot of manpower, a lot of woman power. A lot of people power, right? Okay. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Quarter roll. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Trustee Tafour? Victor, nobody can hear you. Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorized to uh, execute budget transfer to fund parks overtime. This is from the park uh, department uh, service contract to the park overtime contract. Mm -hmm. Overtime line. Questions or concerns? I make the motion. Second. Sally, please. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. 
Natchez? Yes, and uh, I, the manager has indicated that he will be sending us further backup information later on. Lucas? Yes. Before? Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay. Next is the abstract of the audited vouchers. And tonight's is $1,848,029.05. Uh, any questions or concerns? On page eight, um, one, two, three, four, fifth line, fifth item up from the bottom. It says foreclosure. Are we foreclosing on directors? Does anybody know? I think, I think it, it has to do with selling a tax lien. We don't, we don't do foreclosures, we do tax loans. The Village of America never does foreclosures, we just sell the debt. So there, there is no foreclosure? Is that, uh, I'm, I just, I've, I don't think I've seen the word foreclosure in, in the audits before. So if that can be, told to me later on, I'd appreciate that. On page 47, I can get to that. Page 47? Forty-seven, but I have to get to it just a minute. So, yeah, um, second one from the bottom has to do with Keller Sessions Consulting. This is the balance for the I and I. I understand if I'm reading this correctly. Uh, is this the final bill, Jerry? For the I and I. For for the whatever for the consulting balance that the this for what was we had originally passed uh, back in July. You originally passed fifty thousand dollars. For Kellett Sessions, that was one part. Then there was an additional 125,000 for construction management. This is the balance of the first part. And the first part covered the DOH? It covered uh, all the other items up to and including up to the construction management, all of the planning, all of that kind of stuff. So have all have we received all the drawings and have <clears throat> and we have and has DOH approved the drawings? No, we haven't received them all. Say again. They review. We have not received them all. They're reviewing them now. Okay, because part of it requires that uh, the contract, if I recall, when we went through it, is that they had to, that that had to be uh, uh, all the all the approving agencies had to approve everything, and if that hasn't been done. We need to. We should be waiting till that's done in case there are additional things that have to be corrected, because that was the part of the contract. If I understood it correctly, if I'm not, please inform me. Whatever you want to do. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean? Whatever you want to do. What does he want to do? Whatever the board wants to do. Well, I, I don't. I should have had. I should have had this question. A day ago, two days ago, three days ago, so I would have given you the exact answer. I can't tell you now. All right, so we're just going to prove this tonight. And you can. Yeah, you, I'll tell you the answer tomorrow. Okay. Mike, when you have your hand up. Glenn, you want to say something? Yes. All right. Hello. What's up, Glenn? Uh, a, a quick one. Uh, you were talking about um, directors. Uh, directors has been challenging us since 2012. So there's three or four years where we are representing ourselves. It was before we turned over to the town of Rye. And currently they have three different court cases pending so yeah. one of one of them might be foreclosure for the years from 2012 to 2014. You can you can ask your um you can ask your attorney about that. 
So we have we actually have an outside attorney that has to represent us for the three or four years they're challenging before we changed and uh, did our taxes with the. Um, yes, that, that, with the that, was, that was what the bill was for. It was, it was for that attorney. Okay. Yes. Uh, also, on on the um, audit of the bills, underneath the um, underneath the village manager, contract services, we have four human services fees paid to White Plains, which is I, I'm assuming we hired four employees. The test. One 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 was part time uh, rec assistant. We we that's moving a part time to a full time rec assistant. Did we did one rec assistant uh, leave and we're replacing them? We had an open we had an open rec assistant and we replaced that individual. Uh, so we and had an we, open rec assistant. We also we had pay, the, Glenn. We also pay for their test. Yes. And they get promoted. Oh no, I, I I know that. I'm I'm, okay, I'm, I'm just I'm just uh, checking. And then we had two mechanic positions open, so we did re replace the two mechanics. Yeah, we replaced two mechanics. Uh, one of them started, the other one starts in exactly two weeks from today. Yeah, and the last position, it didn't say what we we're hiring for. Raymond, uh, Zach, area. So we have an MEO that we hired, a motor equipment operator, and then two mechanics. Okay. All public works well, employees that we unfroze. Okay, yeah, so the fourth position would have been Parks Department. Okay. Thanks, Glenn. Thanks, Glenn. My last, my last question is, um, capital, we, uh, it's showing that we received a police car for $45,000, but I'm not sure, was that the one hybrid that we ordered? Or is that one out of the three main police cars that we ordered that we're waiting on that's going to be paid for by the um, by the dorm department? Which page are we on? It's it's all the way on the bottom on um, on H twenty one. Gary, I think it's page forty seven. Yeah, it's page forty seven. Yeah, it's so a, that's the. Capital That's equipment. the hybrid that we ordered. It says grant on it. We got a okay. grant. Thank so, you. Through the grant. Yeah, yeah. And it, but it says three. Did we get three police cars or we just get one in? No, we were only paying for one. We did, we did order three new police cars that were destroyed during the flood. But there's okay. only one that we're getting on the grant. The others are getting through insurance and FEMA. Okay. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. Any other questions from the board? I just want to go back to um, uh, the Keller Sessions um, payment. Um, just so we know, Jerry, this isn't about you. Um, and it seems like you're taking it that way. We get this Friday night. Yeah. I've been out of the office most of today. All well, right. I okay. understand that, but. You know, so, you, so, uh, you can't ask you can't ask me to answer the question right now because I, I don't have it pulled up or anything like that. So sometime today, sometime before nine twenty, throw me a throw me a bone, give me a hint. If I if I had the time, I would have. I wish you I wish you did have the time. It's too well, bad that you don't. What am I going to do? So some days, we, you know, everybody is very busy. As you get busy for many days and can't handle everything that you would like to. Um, right. So, so I will tell you tomorrow, I will tell you the answer tomorrow. That's it. It's not nefarious what we're doing here. Nobody. Just the question you have, I will answer it in less than 12 hours. How does that work? Okay. Nobody is saying it's nefarious. Let's be very clear about that. Okay. What I just want to be assured of is that there will be no, the contract called for all the agencies that had to approve it to approve it and that there will be no additional expenses regarding that if they are have questions or other things that need to be done that that's what this you know that's where i am okay thank you uh, anybody else have any other questions or concerns
Not today. Okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. Uh, Sally, please. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Sally, I'll drop this off either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, ma'am. Uh, next up is the manual vouchers. And the order of manual vouchers is $14,533.02. Anybody have any questions or concerns on the manual vouchers? No. Uh, no. Okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. All in favor, no, call the roll. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. No old business uh, resolution, a new business, 4A. <clears throat> Pardon me. Resolution authorizing an agreement with Town of Marinac for construction and maintenance of sidewalks to be installed as part of the Waverly Avenue Bridge. Uh, these are sidewalks that are going to be installed leading to the Waverly Avenue Bridge. Uh, and it's an IMA that just says that since those sidewalks are on village property, the village will maintain those sidewalks. Any questions or concerns? Uh, I'm reading resolution. I don't know that. Uh, okay, it says maintenance and the protein. Okay, yes, fine. Glenn, do you have your hand up for this? I'm assuming it doesn't. Yes, uh, my, my question is Are we paying to build the sidewalks? No. Uh, going to the bridge? No. And the second one would be, are the sidewalks going to be on both sides or on one side of uh, Waverly on the on the bridge? I, I'm not sure offhand, but all this is about once the sidewalks are in that are, that are leading to the bridge, we're going to maintain them. Okay, thank you, Tom. Thank you, sir. Uh, questions and concerns from the board? For more specifics, the, there's more backup on the work session. For Glenn. Okay, I need a motion. So moved. Second. All right, I'll second. Call roll, please. Trustee Winstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? 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 Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry, yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, transfer station, we're doing another time, right? Yes. So we're, time. Skip, we're skipping for B and we're going to 4C. Resolution authorizing bond for Westchester Joint Waterworks Project A1352, Rye Lake UV, UV treatment. Uh, we discussed this in work session. We are approving this bond resolution so that the Westchester Joint Waterworks can then uh, seek money uh, from state grants to help offset the cost. Any questions or concerns? Glenn, do you have your hand up? Yes. What's up, Glenn? Uh, hello? Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Um, would we be able to um, take the $2 million and tie it into the already approved um, bond resolutions? That way we do uh, one set of bonds. Uh, that would be Augie who would answer that question. He's not here tonight. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions or concerns? Okay, I'll make the motion. Second. Uh, Sally, please. Trustee Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Um, yes, and I guess the, my question, which got cut off, is could we 
ask Augie and see if he can do that after the fact or is voting on this making it committing to separate bonds? Probably not, right? No, probably not. So if Augie thinks if Augie thinks it's prudent, he can still make that happen. Yes. Um, I don't, I, we're not. I, I'm, I'm sure that Augie discussed this with the Westchester Joint Waterworks. But Laura, are you going to say something? Yeah, we're not actually going out for bond for this no, yet. It, it's just an approval that, it, it, for the right. funding so that they can go out for the grant. Okay. So we're not actually going to bond this yet. It, it, okay. It's just, uh, so when we do go to bond it, well, it's like uh, we did it ahead of time. Right, exactly. They just need the approval from the board for the grant. So that they could, yeah, see that we have bond. So they can apply for the application, right. Thank you, Laura. It's a pleasure to be understood. <laughs> okay, so do we have a motion already? Yeah, we're up to Trustee Tefor. Yep. Trustee Tefor? Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Thank you. Resolution authorizing budget transfer to fund human resources account for retention of 207C police disability management services. Uh, staff thinks that this will save us money over the long term because of the uh, complexity and the uh, amount of uh, money and time that can be spent on 207C, which is the police department in New York State, uh, how they, they, they do this disability, which is different than uh, regular workman's disability. Is that in some in substance, right, Jerry? Yes. Uh, I need a motion. Moved. Second. I'll, I'll second. Sally, please. Trustee Wenstrup. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. Tafour. Yes. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, resolution for funding IT part-time employment. Four uh, E. One has his hand up. What's up, Glenn? No, no, no. Right, uh, Glenn, let's have some hand discipline here. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, resolution funding for IT part time employee $9,600. Questions or concerns? Need a motion? So moved. Second. Sally, please. Trusty Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes, with the understanding that this is just for one year. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Vic, the people can't hear you. Yes. I think I have a problem. My mic here. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Aye. Uh, resolution authorization to execute budget amendment to fund microfees conversion. Uh, this is, we have uh, minutes of the board of trustees that go back to 1895 to the first board of trustees meeting and they're in beautifully leather bound uh, volumes that are quickly decaying, uh, it, written in beautiful uh, penmanship. Uh, but if we don't do something, they'll be lost to history. Uh, so this funding, uh, which is a lot cheaper than previous estimates to do this, uh, will allow us to forever preserve our history. Any questions or concerns? Okay, uh, I'll make the motion in, in the name of history. I'll second. Sally, please. Trustees Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Thank you. Oh, you're welcome, Sally. <laughs> well, you'll be done with that next week? Uh, 4G, resolution acceptance of funds from New York State to the Environmental Trust Fund, uh, $5,000 from New York State Energy Research and Development Authority. Uh, this was a uh, grant supplied for by the, uh, the Environmental Committee. Uh, and we're just accepting the money for them. Any questions or concerns? 
I'll make the motion. And I thank the Environmental Committee. Committee Second. Second. Uh, Sally? Trustees Winstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up are uh, resolutions, uh, renewal of motel licenses. The first is for H and it is for the Mamaronic Motel. Uh, these motels are inspected and licensed every year. And, you know, we, we do uh, get uh, yeah. revenue from that. Yep. Uh, first up is Mamaronic Motel. Anybody will make the motion of Mamaronic Motel? So moved. Second. Call the roll. Trustees Wensha? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next up for H2, this is for Vincent and Sons Motel. This is the motel by uh, Rhinec High School. I'll make the motion. Okay. Call the roll. Let's see one step. Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorization to, to execute an intermissible agreement to participate in New York State grant for the development and maintenance of the recycle right application. Uh, this just allows us to uh, access money, uh, a little bit of money uh, from uh, it's a sustainable Westchester, right? The DEC for a sustainable, sustainable Westchester uh, run right. app. Right. Any questions or concerns? Okay. I need a motion. So moved. Second. Sally, please. Trustees Winstrup? Yes. Natchez? Lucas? Yes. Tapour? Yes. Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, resolution authorization to execution of police. Mutual aid plan. Uh, this is something that all the communities in Westchester, uh, I believe all the communities in Westchester participate in. Uh, you know, God forbid there's a situation where a community uh, has a natural emergency or a police emergency or public disturbance where they need extra help from their neighbors. We all uh, pitch in and help each other. And uh, you know, may it never be used, but thank God that it's there. That also, the fire department also uh, participates in such a plan. Uh, any questions or concerns? Anyone want to make the motion? So moved. Second. Very good. Call the roll. Trustee Wensnup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Okay, the next up um, Ed, is item K. Uh, to add an item to the agenda appointment to a the, the Arts Council. So I need a motion on item K. So moved. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, the next up is to appoint Michael Niberto to a member of the Arts Council. I, I'm not sure of the term. But uh, Sally will fix that in the morning. I believe it's 23, but I can advise. Okay. Okay, I make that motion. Second. Uh, call the roll, please, Sally. Trustee Wenstrup? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. Tafour? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. And the next item to add to the agenda is item M to add. Uh, an item to the agenda for an appointment to the planning board. I'll make that motion to add Second. the item to the agenda. Second. All in favor of adding the item to the agenda. Aye. 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 Now I will make a motion to appoint Seamus O'Rourke uh, to fill the unexpired term on the planning board. Second. Call the rolls, please, Sally. Trustee Wenstra? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? 
Yes. To four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye, and thank you to Mr. O'Rourke for his tireless service to the community. Uh, next up is communication to the board round two. Okay, Glenn. First, I wish each and every one of you a happy holiday season, a Merry Christmas. Please enjoy your time with your family, enjoy your time with your friends, and enjoy your time out. As one of my gifts to you, at your next meeting, I will not be speaking at all. <laughs> uh, we always enjoy hearing from you, Glenn. Yeah. The um, other thing is once uh, January gets started, uh, the village has to aggressively start to address their uh, capital needs. Village Hall has to be addressed. It's just been pushed down too many times. Uh, we, we've already been put on notice. We have a lot of leakage in there. The police uh, locker rooms have been a horror show for, for very, very many years. I think um, that it's becoming more and more expensive to keep our records over on Halstead Avenue. So I think that you should really come up with a comprehensive plan, literally tear, tear it down, go down to the walls, keep the his, historic uh, parts that you can, expand it, make extra room for, 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 for further uh, growth in the future and under, understand that you're going to need larger hallways, larger rooms. It's it's absolutely ADA incompliant from top from top to bottom, and this this might be your last uh, bite at the apple to get those extra low um, rates on um, on uh, interest. You know, there, there's there there is pressure for interest rates to go up, and if if you're going to spend that money, this is the time. That's the number one capital project that's been sitting for years and years with the village. The last uh, item is uh, FEMA gives us back 75%. The rest would come from New York State. So if New York State hasn't already approved giving us money for IDA, um, speak to whoever you have to county, state, uh, wide uh, whisper in their ear that they uh, you're looking forward to see if uh, they will approve the funding for uh, the remaining losses from Ida. Very, very Merry Christmas. Happy holidays to each and every one of you. Enjoy. Bye bye. Thanks, Glenn. Have a good night. All right. Communication to the board round two is done. Report from the village manager. One is a lawsuit uh, against the village and HCZMC to file for the record. The other is an intermunicipal agreement. Good summer camp program? Okay. Good and summer bad, right? Good and bad news. A uh, report from the clerk treasurer. Sally, you want me to do it? I'll do it. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Lay, lay it on us. Uh, this is a reminder to all residents that second half taxes are due on or before January 3rd, 2022. And we will be in the office on Monday, January 3rd, 2022 from nine to five. We're open every day, nine to five, Tuesday through Friday. Until then, you could come in and pay, you can mail them, or you could put them in the mailbox outside of our office or pay online. And then secondly, we're filing for the record, the certification and results of the 2021 village elections. Congratulations, Mayor Murphy and Trustee Lucas. And we have a resignation of an arts council member. That's the 2023 term that you just filled. And we have a resignation of a Marine Education Center Advisory Committee member. Thank you. Thank you. Report from the village attorney. Uh, Mayor, just want to report that local law five of 2021, which is the tree law, was filed through the Secretary of State and became effective on October 18th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, minutes, commissions, board and committees. Uh, minutes of the Board of Trustees special meeting of November 17th and 18th, the work session and regular meeting of November 22nd, 2021. Uh, minutes of the Board of Architecture Review for November 2nd, 2021. Minutes of the Board of Ethics meeting of November 10th and November 17th, 2021. Minutes of the Planning Board meeting of October 27th, 2021. Minutes of the Committee for the Environment meeting of October 19th, 2021. Minutes of the Art Council meeting of November 1st, 2021. 
Uh, I'd just like to say before we adjourn that, you know, as Glenn pointed out, this is the holiday season. Um, just please everybody, you know, those of us who put up trees, uh, trees can get very dry very quickly. Uh, you know, and they, they, they're, they're beautiful and they're lovely and we all love them, but just please keep them watered so that they don't dry out because they can go up uh, very fast in a fire. Uh, just check your electrical connections. Uh, if you're plugging in a tree, uh, plug it into, you know, I would plug it into a ground fault interrupter that you could buy at a, a, a local hardware store just in case uh, anything overheats. It'll cut off the electricity before there's a fire. Uh, check your smoke alarms. Uh, check your carbon monoxide alarms. Uh, this is the time of year where you know we we uh, all love to enjoy all our lights, but it it does make for uh, you know sometimes a fire hazard. Uh, don't bury uh, electrical cords under rugs where they could get crushed. Uh, keep everything uh, you know nice and neat and out of the way. Uh, and uh, that being said. I hope everybody uh, on the board and works for the village and in the village has a wonderful holiday season. Uh, it's been a tough couple of years and uh, God, God knows we all deserve a good time. So uh, God bless you all. I hope you all have a good evening uh, and a good Christmas time or holiday time or whatever you celebrate. Uh, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. 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 Thanks. Good evening, everybody.